Good morning! Is that not the most adorable greenhouse in the entire world? I am beyond excited to have Jane Green off with me today. Two hours! I am so excited. How could I not be excited about my very first guest after lockdown? And it's the incredible Grain Jean off. I'm so excited to share that with you today. But first things first, you're our lovely little early birds. Look what we've got! Tell me you're not excited about this incredible fabric here. We have got the most adorable pansies here. Absolutely gorgeous. It just doesn't look like a little bit of summer in your box. Just lovely there. And we've got this coordinating, I think this is the hot tomato. Oh, are these sweet peas? Oh, they do look like pansies, but not sure why it's called sweet peas, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Look how fabulous they are. And is this called hot tomato? I can't remember which one it is because you see we've got so many beautiful colours here. But just look how beautifully that pops in. You're getting half a metre of each of these. So it's a metre and a half of fabric. All three together, if you bought them individually, you'd be paying £4 more than our early bird price today. £8.97. And just look how gorgeous this fabric is. So it is, it was hot tomato, I thought I got it right. But just look how much fabric you're getting. Now, unfortunately, as we all know, in the current climate, getting fabric is getting harder and harder. Once this oily bird is gone, this sweet pea um, slash pansy fabric, you can't get it anymore. Completely sold out everywhere. Just look how beautiful that is. Can you imagine this is a lining for your bags? Or even the outside of your bag, like a little contrast pop of colour in something. It's just such a bit. See, I'm also looking at this. This is half a metre of fabric there. That's quite a lot of binding. Can you imagine that as a binding for your quilt? And that is $8.97. You're getting half a metre of the pansy sweet pea fabric there. But you're also getting... See, I've been off for a week, so I've completely forgotten how to fold fabric. <laughs> so that's the sweet pea there. But then you're also getting a half a metre of this gorgeous uh, sweet pea, uh, the hot tomato. I'm getting all flustered with my words today. It's because I had to spend so much, so much longer today doing my lockdown hair. So there we go. Oh, so you've got this gorgeous to hot tomato fabric there. Isn't that just the most gorgeous, gorgeous orange? I absolutely adore this. So you're getting half a metre of that. But the great thing with this is when you do see the way that they pair these bundles, and I don't know who does it, but they're very clever. Look at how perfectly, look how perfectly that matches with this hot tomato. So there's a really good eye on the person who's doing this. It's brilliant. And then we've got this gorgeous blue, which just brings that whole pansy combination together. I don't know what this is called. Is this teal? It's not really a teal, I would expect. But I have to say, because I know normally we all look at it and go, oh, fabric's cheap. No, nope, not going to be great quality. This is stunning. This is exactly what I sell in my little shop. Not at that price, that's for sure. <laughs> so, but you can see the colours are so fabulous. The quality is really, really good. Already? Wow. For less than nine pounds than a metre and a half of fabric, I totally understand why I'm over a third of the fabric has gone already. You can imagine paying this the same price for three fat quarters. And look at that, that's $8.97. Yours will be folded a lot better. This is what happens. I get a day or a couple of days off and I can't fold anymore. But we do like to treat you with our early birds, making sure you're getting the nicest deals. And I'm just putting that the other way around so you can see how perfectly that colour pops in there. But this is definitely the star of our little early bird there. But we'll keep you, go we'll keep you posted with regards to selling out because this is definitely, definitely a, a hot project today. Sorry. Um, definitely a hot um, t uh, item today. But speaking of hot items... I'm not saying anything because she's right there, she's coming. But don't forget to check out our website because we're going to get through, we've got a menu. Sorry, I forgot, we've got our first menu, first time I'm doing the t uh, t uh, today on Sewing Street menu. We've got 8 o'clock with Jane Greenoff and I, <coughs> I'm so excited. And then we've got the uh, sashings and border of the block of the week. I know all of you have been waiting for that. Then we've got more cross stitch with Jane, I'm so excited. And then we have the fabulous fabrics at 11 o'clock. Now, 
I'm just going to say, if any of you haven't checked out our website, www.sewingstreet.com, have a little look on the website and go through and see all the amazing fabrics coming up at 11 o'clock. I'm just going to just put these out there. I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm probably going to get into trouble for showing you in advance, but look at that. Just look how gorgeous they are. The, the last hour, there is so many, many fabrics in that last hour. Go and have a little look on the website as well, because I know that's a few hours away. You want to have a little look. Now, if you want to get in touch with us, we love hearing from you, especially when we're live. And Jane's here. So any questions for Jane, drop us an email. We've got a brand new email, which is Sewing Street sorry, studio at sewingstreet.com. You can tell I'm far too flustered this morning. Studio at sewingstreet.com. Failing which, if you want to use our Facebook page, best way of doing that is www.facebook.com forward slash sewingstreettv. Failing that, go onto Facebook and just type in sewingstreettv in the search bar and that will come up. And on that, there's a little message us um, in the studio button. So you can click, us, click on there and do it. If you'd like to follow us on Instagram, that's at Sewing Street on Instagram and we've got our Facebook fans page because it's make of the week today um, and then also I think our best resource we've got available at the moment is our YouTube channel uh, which is going to youtube.com and type in Sewing Street and every video that we've got available going back to the 14th of February when we launched that is available for you to watch including all of my blocks of the week going back for the last 12 weeks and yeah so that's a really great way of going from there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. What? You can't be serious. Right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, our early bird, and this is why you join us nice and early, we have less than 10 of these left. So if you are liking the look of that, please make sure you check your basket out. And remember, we've only got the one day PNP, $3.95 all day. So you can check this out. You've paid your postage and packaging for the whole day. And it doesn't matter how many times you check out after that throughout the day. You're only paying that one, one £3.95 all day. So there's less than 10 of these there now. So now we've got the lovely Jane. So we're going to do a little bit of maneuvering around the studio. So we're going to have a little slide coming up now on how you buy with us today while we maneuver everything safely for everybody to come back on set. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello, everybody. Welcome, everybody. In case you don't know, this is the fabulous Jane Greenoff. If you don't know Hello. about her, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, OK. Well, Just nice, throwing nice you on the spot there. Yes, thank Welcome. you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes, I'm Jane Greenoff. Um, I started the Cross Stitch Guild in 1996. And it's been handed over to the wonderful Andrea Thompson, who Andrew is Thompson. Now Andrea. Oh, Andrea. Yeah, Andrea. I thought you said Andrew and Thompson. I'm like, that's my husband's name. My husband hasn't <laughs> told me he does that. <laughs> So Andrea is looking after the Cross Stitch Guild and I'm designing for it now instead of doing lots of the other stuff. Plus I'm working on my books and various other things. So Fantastic. I'm not really retired. Well, Which would we you thought, ever retire? Well, I thought I was going to and grow marrows like Mr Poirot, but it didn't work. <laughs> I seem to be busier than ever, actually. Well, so Jane, it's lovely we have to be a back. lovely message in from you by another Jane. Oh, She's really? saying it's lovely to see Jane back on TV. Thank All you. her credit card is poised and ready. I love Red you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and she's saying lots of love to you. Oh, bless. So another Jane out there. Indeed. Thanks for getting in touch. 
It's lovely to and, hear from um, you, Jane. Yes, we'll we'll go through some things for you. I've got something very special to show you. Let's Can I start? Of course. Okay, so this some of you may have seen this at fairs when the Cross Stitch Guild has had a booth. Um, so this is a kit, um, the greenhouse kit. It's so cute. And in a minute, I will find the picture that I brought specially to show you how it happened. All right, this is the truth. Oh, wow! That. Gosh, you match that colour perfectly! <laughs> this greenhouse was my retirement present to myself. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> Which you're not able to <laughs> use because you're too busy working. Too busy. <laughs> um, in fact, this was my greenhouse, so it's just been put up. That's the first day. And uh, Jenny Dixon, the Cross Stitch Guild editor, said, well, of course, you know what you ought to do. And I, I sort of thought, I'll do a garden sampler, you yes. know. I said, no, no, you need to do a greenhouse box. Well, this is it. And so I must beautiful. be honest with you, when it was first launched, um, it was a little seed box. Um, and we had packets of seeds oh, in it. Adorable. It well, was really sweet. People are already checking out on oh, this. Bless. Well, I know there aren't hundreds of them because they take quite a bit of packing. I'm going <laughs> to grab the box in a minute. So when you when you buy this, you get... Look, I'm coming out in goosebumps. You oh. see, I even want to stitch it. <laughs> right, so, so you get the little green scissors. Well, you get well done for everybody who's already got it. The what bow. We'll talk about what bows in a minute as a general thing. But if I run through, you get the... This dear little chatelaine for your scissors. And What's then, it called? That's a little chatelaine. Chatelaine? I now, need the, I, I never know what they were called. That's well, brilliant. Well, we call them this. Now, truly a chatelaine was the thing that the housewife or the m m important woman of the property, the home in the olden days, would wear around her waist with the chain and it would have a purse and it would have a pincushion and it would have a little aid memoir and a pencil and so on and so on. Now terribly collectible. I mean, thousands of pounds to buy oh, a, wow. a real Chatelaine. And then well, you, you can make it, one now and in a few years' one. time it'll be worth that thing. And this is just darling. Look at this. That is so adorable. So I'll show you what you get in the box, because I know that you'll wonder. It's a considered purchase, obviously. Because there is so much in that kit, isn't yes, there? Yes, that's right. It comes boxed. And if I just go along here. So you've got, obviously, you've got your instructions and charts. And I think you know by now how we do these. I mean, I draw them on my computer. I will get this lovely, clear charts oh, for you wow. to see. Oh my goodness, look at the quality on that. Oh, you don't mess around, do you? So we don't, well, well we try not to, you know. <laughs> um, this kit is already pre-sorted, and I think this is quite important oh, to point out. Oh, that is out. really good. You can see, the point of this really is, it, it's partly to help you. <coughs> the, the other reason is that, quite frankly, how would you describe all these different greens oh, if, you, if there was a knot you had to undo? You know, if you get a bundle, you've got to separate all these. And sometimes it's actually quite difficult to do that. So the threads are pre-sorted. There's an Gosh, emergency phone number. Hours. It does take time. <laughs> yes, we've all sat round and done that of an evening, I have to tell you. Well, a quarter of the stock on your greenhouse is already Ish. gone. Right, OK, I'll try and get through the end of it before it's gone. <laughs> you take as long as you need. You've got the lovely scissors. I love being able to indulge in all of these. <laughs> And then you've got the tape measure to put in your stuffing to tape. Oh my goodness, so you've actually got the that's tape measure there. before and after. Oh, that's brilliant. And then the felt. Now, this felt comes from Oliver Twist. Now, some of you may be familiar with the make. They hand dye all their threads. And this is pure wool felt, buttons. And then you've got the cashel linen. Now, this is, this is the linen that, that I nearly always use. Um, this is a 28 count pure linen from Zweigarten Zuitsky. Um, it is the most beautiful linen you can buy, lovely. in my opinion. I have to say that quickly. Ribbon. And then you've got pure silk to line your box. Oh, Jane, and all look the wadding. at that. Look. So that's... Gosh, there's loads it in is, there. It is a smashing thing to do. And, I mean, I've seen some really, really splendid versions that have been finished. Do and me a favour. We've seen now the, the, the starting products. Just remind me now what the finished products look like. Because okay. trying to take your little orange tape measure, for example, yes. well, let's to see how that ends up. That's, so you, you stitch the, this, the, the, this little circle and this little circle. Yes. And then this is a linen band that you just fix around the side. Oh, how clever. So there's no hemming to, 
to do. You know, it's a finished edge. Well, you've also been thinking about what the easiest way of doing it would be. Well, you know, I have to say here that I know from my own experience that stitchers aren't necessarily sewers. Fair stitchers enough. love to stitch. They don't always want to make things up. Perfect. So, so we try to keep it. Well, I won't More deny, I have, a, I have a friend who does crochet, right. hello Dolores, uh, and Dolores actually loves making the things but hates finishing them. <laughs> yes, well, <I'm, laughs> so you it's know, a standing I joke know between this them. is true. But don't put those away, oh, show sorry. us those, show us those. Right, well there's a needle book. Look how now, adorable this that is, is. This is, I wouldn't say this was a first project, for obvious reasons, there's a lot of it. Um, I think you should have worked from a chart before, before you go in, leap into this. Um, once you've worked from a chart once, there's no reason why you can't do this. It's just a lot of cross stitch. There are some little hem stitches that I teach you in the instructions. And what else is on here? This is a little what bow. Now, the what bow, you, you will I know have met these before. This one's actually got a needle in it, which I'll move before I get caught. So this is a little three-sided shape. Now we've got a lovely little camera above you. Do you mind if we just pop that on the table? If I, just if I to move see it, that. Because that is so adorable. put it there, look. Because I think the detailing on Ooh. these is, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> things collapsing. The detailing on there, this is look. so Isn't fine. Sweet? So you've got a little alphabet there. That's beautiful. There. So you can see it just ahead of you there. There you are, you see? That is so basically brilliant. you're going to work three squares next to each other. I'll show you the chart for it actually. Then it'll there make was some it more writing on the side, wasn't you, there? There, that's the chart. Whoops. Yes. No, I think you had it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> I never know with this camera. That's okay. Right. So there that's completely right. So just show us. So so oh my goodness, it's three. A to Z. Gosh, that's really fine. So what does that look like there? Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that so is. So do you see? That's how it works. Oh, I think that's upside down, isn't it? You're in your hand. There we go. There. Gosh, look how beautiful that is. So it's simple to make, and obviously you've got the threads to make the little twisted cords. But it's so beautifully fine. So I think it's, it's the, the fabric you're going to be working on is 28 count linen. Now for those of you who are used to working on Ada fabric, this is going to be the same size as your 14 count Ada. So although it looks finer um, and has a finer finish, mm. um, the stitches, the actual crosses, look at that. These are actually the same size as they would be on a 14 Ada. Oh, so a... don't be panicked by it at all. But and of all... course, the joy of this is that you can always work the tape measure first. Of course. To get your eye in. But look at the detailing on those flowers. Well, yes, and that's the other thing. I've seen some amazing versions of this because people, oh, people... obviously have done their own thing. Oh. And I've got you some... don't mind that, do oh, you? Of course I don't. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's your. Pr... The joy of counting cross stitch is the fabric's blank. Oh, yeah, it's you can do your own thing. You. There's no, there's no transfer to wash out. You know, it's it's all blank. So, yes, yeah, some of them done climbers coming up through the roof, oh. and I mean, really, oh, really gosh, pretty, how brilliant, really pretty things. So, so which order would you recommend people start with? Well, the, the chart comes like this. So, if I just give you this one first, oh, look at that. So this you can you. All you have to remember is that you have to leave a small margin between each. So you could work these on one piece of fabric uh -huh. and cut them out. Oh, really? Obviously, you need to have a margin round so that you, you've got foldy under bits for when you make it up. Um, so you could work all of that. But if you're nervous of working on linen, work one of these little ones. That's so brilliant. You Jane, know, this is the tape measure. You'll be pleased to know. There's only a quarter of the stock left. Well, I'm sorry about there that. There are only everybody. a quarter of the stock anymore. left. We, we literally couldn't, couldn't keep up. And no. you all know great quality when you see it. Look at this. So this is, yes, well, I think it's lovely. I, I mean, I, I, look, I mean, I'm ridiculous, isn't it? I think I need to get out more, you know. I'm still getting all goosey just talking about it. It's, it is a lovely thing, and I was well chuffed with it. I have to tell you a little secret, though. When I was making it, um, when I was actually making <coughs> the original, I had to make a box in cardboard first mm. because when I first made it, in principle, uh, the roof didn't fit because I didn't understand the, the, the architecture of, of, um, of roofs. Oh, so yes, I had to make it in cardboard <laughs> first. The, so we're going to do the, um, a, the alphabet, Ada alphabet next, Luke, if that's so if right. Can, if I can whip oh, those away. Oh, quick alphabet, sorry. Here we go. Now, these are... This is... 
uh, a genre that some of you might be familiar with. If I twizzle it a little bit so you can see a bit better, there we are. So these are Quaker designs, and um, there were no Quakers before 1600 and something. I can't remember the date, I should. Um, so these are taken from um, designs that belong to the Aqua School up in Pontefract in Yorkshire. They're Quaker designs, and the Cross Stitch Guild has the rights to reproduce these patterns oh, for wow. them. The school earns a little from that. But before you look at these, I want to show you something. Now, I've just got to see where he's gone. <gasps> this now, is just a thing of beauty. I'm going to put this in my hand and let you see. Can you see that? Now, this was knitted, knitted by a child. That is incredible. In, I'll just turn it over, 1800. Oh, my goodness, look at that. And it was a gift from A.S., to ES. That is just Isn't incredible. It? Now I, and it was I, knitted? It was knitted on sewing needles. That is incredible. Isn't it extraordinary? This is a particularly good example. I was very fortunate to get it. Um, I have to say that I saw one being auctioned this week, not as nice as this, and it was 1,200 pounds. Wow! So um, you're not having it. It's I was going to say, I hope that's insured. <laughs> that's Isn't it beautiful? brilliant. And this design of the swan on here is very typical of the of the genre of the age. Um, if you go to aqua school and they have an exhibition they would actually have um designs with that swan on That's so incredible. if i can snaffle some of these kits so the kit for this one comes like so so that one's on the linen this is on linen so now, the difference between the two is the yes, fabric you're doing it on i think the aid that. is next to you isn't it bless you did oh. i have it already yes look oh we'll start with the linen yeah there we are. there's the linen one i'm going to move this round a bit there we go so this is the one of this pair this is the linen which is the same size count as the fabric i just showed you for the greenhouse oh, so right. it's 28 count now these are stuck together with elephant spit all right, so it may just take me a while <laughs> you to tear the packet. They used need. to stop people stealing from them in the days when they were in the shops. <laughs> right, so let me explain. Okay, so this is raw linen. Now, I, I'll just see. Yes, I can still smell it. This is raw linen, unbleached linen. So this still sort of smells of the soil. I mean, I think it's just, oh, wow. just wonderful stuff. I mean, again, it makes me go goosey. And then this, this is the exciting part of this. I, I have to say that thread is beautiful. It, isn't it lovely? This is, this is pure it's, silk. But it's variegated as well. Yes, it's variegated. It's slightly variegated, not enormously so. Um, it's 12 ply, so there's 12 lengths to each chunk, if you see what I mean. Um, and, of course, you just set off stitching. If you've never worked on a piece of linen before, um, I think you'd find this is just the best thing because you're not going to be changing your um, thread all the time. You just keep stitching. That comes more obvious on the second one of these I'm going to show you. So on the Ada fabric, now this is linen Ada. Now this is really just there to confuse you. <laughs> but basically linen is made of flax and is woven as an even weave material, meaning that top to bottom and left to right, they're the same number of threads, which means when you make a cross on it, it's square. If you look at very old samplers, often the crosses are sort of squished like this or like this. You know, oh, of course, because the, the weaving was done by it, hand. Exactly. Now, this one is made of flax also, but it's woven in fours. I'll, I'll see if I can do the elephant split thing again. <laughs> and um, if I can get a nail in the hole there, I'm sure I can whip it open. I'm sure if Andrea's watching, she's looking can at her lovely sample. Can we pop that in the bag so we can just keep admiring your beautiful sample? Let me just do that. Gosh, look at that. So the one you've done in the sample, that's in the linen? That's worked in the linen. The linen. Now, if you worked it on this fabric here, which is Ada. So this one is Ada now, or if you just opened right. up. Yes, you see? Now, the stitches are the same size. So if you want to do this and you really can't face linen for any reason, it will be the same size and look as pretty on this. You don't have to worry. It will still look lovely and you still work it in the beautiful silk. Do you prefer using one to the other? Um, well, I've got an admission to make now. Uh -oh. um, and that is, no, no. <laughs> I learnt on linen by mistake. 
Oh! <laughs> my neighbour who showed me how to stitch gave me linen. Yes. And I didn't know there was anything else. So the first nine things I stitched were on linen. Yes. And then I discovered the Ada. And ah, having learnt to work on linen, I didn't, want, didn't go backwards. Now. now, people sometimes regard Ada as the beginner's fabric. I don't think it is. It's a fabric that has been specifically designed for county cross stitch because the squares on the material are very, very square. Right. And on linen, you do get a bit of variation. And if you're emulating something old, that's very charming. But obviously, if you're wanting to do dog tooth check or gingham, mm. you want very square stitches, and Ada would be better. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yes, so of course. I'm just going to show you the other one in this series because. And that's this one. This here, is Berry isn't it? Brush. It's that one there. Now this one is. It's a bit easier for you to see that it's um, variegated because this Gosh. one there's a bit more colour var variation. You see what I mean? So this is the Ada you're showing us this, now. I've got the Ada in my hand. Perfect. This is the thread look. Oh my oh, goodness. It's beautiful stuff. Now do, do you dye the threads or how no, do you no, get no, the no, threads? No, no, no. no, these come from um, Steph Francis. Oh right. Now some of you will know Steph Francis. She's been um, a, a fibre artist for well, I don't. Gosh, I, I better beautiful. not say how long for. She'd be very cross. <laughs> Longer than I've been Long, a quilter. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's yes, a, yes, a nice yes, way of saying. Oh, what that's you say. beautiful. So this is the thread. So again, because it really did look as though it was two or different, three different threads yes, in there. But you, the fact that you yes, variegated that way. Absolutely. So they're really fun to do because a lot of the aqua samplers were worked in one or two colours, and uh, they're fabulously collectible. There's one at the moment at uh, Whitney Antiques. Uh, that's six thousand pounds. Oh my goodness! For, it's, it's an aqua sample done by a scholar, done in seventeen forty six, I think, um, and it's that sort of figure. So they're very collectible, and these these medallion patterns are very um, indicative of the Quakers. Right. Yes. So this is the these are they're charming. They're really And as I said, charming. it's really your choice about the sort of fabric you want to use. Um, I personally work on linen. You prefer the linen. Uh, and I, but I, I think as well, you've got that at such a great price point. I suppose it's not really that difficult to buy both. Well, oh, you've no. lost a needle there. I've got to and needle. be able to try one or the other. Yes. And you can see and it's because it's, it's such a beautiful piece. Aren't they nice? They I mean, really I, are. And I like the, the fact there's history. You know, I like of the fact course. they come from somewhere. Of course. I'll put all these back together afterwards, <laughs> otherwise, I'll be shot. <laughs> I have to say, because I've not done a lot of cross-stitch, I did a very, very tiny piece of black work once, and this very poor lady at um, the local craft centre down the road from me was very long-suffering and sat with me for two or three hours, and <laughs> she very, very kindly at the end of it said, you're very good at quilting, though. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was very kind. Don't be but really. the black work, because the only reason I mention it is I can see that yes. is just Now, this is this piece here. If you can just see, it's squeezing behind the caption a bit there. Look oh, we'll I come back to that in a bit, I think. Yeah. What have okay. we got next? You tell me. The needles. Ah, Gold-plated right. needles. Because you obviously need decent needles to be doing this. So this is a... Well, there are two sets that we do. I'm on again later today, and both of them will occur. This was done specifically for some of you who've not done much stitching before. Um, it's a considered purchase when you're buying 10 gold needles. If you don't think you're going to stitch, it's, you, know, you might not think it's worth it. So we put together what we'd call sort of a beginner's set, really. So it's a pair of really nice, sharp embroidery scissors and two each of the sorts of sizes that we'd use for counter cross stitch. OK. Now, if you don't know what size needle you're going to use, what you do is you put it in your fabric. It should go through the fabric. Uh, without enlarging the hole, but it shouldn't fall through. Oh, Remembering right. our fabric tends to, when you're quilting, obviously you're working on densely Much. packed fabric. We're working on loose weaves. Um, and what we're, they're blunt needles because what we're doing is we're parting the threads rather than piercing the fabric. Ah. So this is um, our essential set. It sounds like a well known supermarket, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is our little essential set which is smashing, so you're getting my gold needles, sold by the Cross Stitch Guild. There's two microns of gold on every needle. Oh my. We know we get a certificate every time we have them gold plated and it's measured. Um, this was an accident of fate, I have to say. I'd like to say it was deliberate, but at the, when someone asked me how much gold I wanted, I didn't know. 
Well, how do you know? <laughs> of course. I don't buy gold most weeks, you oh, know. Oh, goodness me. So he said that British, the, British, um, the Ministry of Defence have um, two microns of gold on their detonators for grenades. I said, I think I want that. Oh, that's brilliant. So that's how we got to So not only are you getting enough gold to detonate a grenade, we are. you're also getting the most fabulous needles Absolutely. as well, which is so brilliant. I often and it's such a great price point yes, for that as yes, well. It's yes. a really and I mean, good one. When work. you think you can pay £10 for just a pair of scissors. Yeah, exactly. And these needles are, well, we, one says things like they're the best. Well, you would say that, but... but well, it's, you, it's we, got your name on, and you're quite well regarded, in well, my opinion, know, so... If we, if we... You can do the math. Yes, yes, quite. <laughs> and if we, we always say, if you can prove there are hours and the gold comes off, we'll replace them. Gosh. So, what more can I tell you? Anyway, that's Brilliant. the essential set, which I thought you might like to see. And then I see box, so you can keep them away from everyone else. And not well, let anyone use your precious scissors. Well, as you know, we've got very savvy shoppers here. We've got less than 20 of your scissors left. And your greenhouse has sold out. So you're going to have to start putting those back together again. You Clearly, am. they're very popular. We definitely need sweet? more of those. When you haven't even got to the half an hour into your first hour with that, and it's I'm sold out. I'm putting it away. Like I have to be No, no, leave it you. out. It's so beautiful. Right, then. I just want to look at it. <laughs> Isn't it sweet, though? That is so adorable. And I love the fact you've got the little ribbons on the top as well. I, one of my next projects, you see, again, I'm getting goosey. Um, <laughs> we went out to Monet's garden recently, so I'm going to do Monet's house with the shutters and do a oh box as well. Goodness. But it's not even drawn yet, so well, no phone calls. If you, <laughs> I mean, if it's not drawn yet, seriously. So I hear we have a book from you as well. Yes. Now, this is the stitch book. Yes. Now, this is um, the fourth edition. Fourth edition, that shows how well, popular it you is. Know, it was quite interesting, actually, because I did it when my Cross Stitchers Bible, which I will mention in my second hour later, hmm. Cross Stitchers Bible was out of print, and right. there was no apparent hurry from the print, the publishers. Another story. Anyway, uh, there were no hurry, in hurry to reprint. So, and I, I often, when I start to do a new project, I will go, right, I'm going to do a... Uh, uh, a cut hem here, and I'm going to go. Um, how do I start it? So I quite like having a refresh. So what I wanted was a it's book. like a little go-to, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. I wanted a lie-down book with a stitch in alphabetical order, one on a page. That's how it started. Oh my so goodness! How clever! The first one came out, and we sold out. I cannot tell you how it just, it just, just disappeared. And, and then we ask members, when we're reprinting, you know, what sort of thing, you know, to, should we put in it? So then, of course, we're getting lots of tips and hints from people, like how you split your threads um, and a way waste knot, um, starting with a loop. So there's the basics. Then you've got 111 stitches with a page each. Oh my goodness, that's so um, Each one of these is signed by herself. Oh my. On her kitchen table. <laughs> Usually I do them in the hour between the programmes, but this time <laughs> I actually got myself organised. Now if I just quickly flick. So we've got oh, hard wow, look at that woven wheel. Yes, they're, they're fun to do. Some of that's these, beautiful. Some of these stitches are pinched from surface embroideries. They're not all counted. Right. But you can use them in counted embroidery. So I think that it's... A, Nice, clear, this is redone recently for this edition, how to do hardanger. So this is the bonus section, A if bonus you like. section. And then we've got a section on hemming. Um, various different types of hems. And then if I get to the end little section here, which we found very... This is where the members put their oar in. This is making a folded hem. Now, I, this is a folded hem here. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, this is a folded hem. Jane, you've timed that perfectly because I want to see that next. <laughs> and I didn't know that. I really no, didn't. didn't. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got making tassels and cords. Then we've Gosh, got things beautiful. like making a biscornu, which is one of those. Oh, wow. Making the what bow. We talked about those before with the little greenhouse. Do you remember? know what I love about that biscornu? It looks a bit like a donut. Yes, it does look I like really a donut. I really would love a donut right now, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> Making humbugs, washing and ironing, stretching and mounting. So the, the thing about this book is... Oh, and that describes your needles as well. Well, this, this is life-size. Um, there is a reason for this. It started off 
as a, as a gift we gave to members some years ago, they had a Perspex version of this yes. as a resub, resub gift. And you see, my drawer, I've got my needles, they're not all sorted in sizes. They are occasionally sorted, but often they're not. And actually, when I go to, I actually have to go, right, OK. Which one and I get is it? my book out, and if you lie the needles on top, you can tell, you which, can one tell which one's which. What a clever And it does idea. actually work. So that's the book, as I said, it's got a white clean But it's lining. a wonderful book, it's got absolutely everything in there from start to finish. All sorts of good stuff. Um, what a brilliant idea. And herself, let me just check. I love the way you call it herself. Oh, all signed, gosh. Of course I've Well that's worth it. more than the price of the book, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, that's the stitch book. I said it's back in, this is the last one. Now I said, not the last copy, sorry. What I mean is, this is the last time I'm doing the stitch book. There will not be a fifth edition. Why? There is a reason, and that is this is the most pages I can get in that ring bind. The ah. next size up would be another 20 pages, then it's not a pocket book. Good point. It's a different book. It's a different type of uh, book. Whether I do a different book or not is another matter. But, but this, this one is a, that's yeah, This it. is the most the printer could get in the thing. Oh, my goodness. Because it needs to lie flat. It has to, yes. You break spines if you don't have exactly. them like that. Well, you heard it here first. Twelve ninety nine today, and it's signed. Now we've got this wonderful sampler book, flower sampler book. Well, this this started off as a lesson for Cross Stitch Guild members, if you can imagine that, with a page at a time. So the principle is that you start off with a cover, and you pop it away in the box. It comes in a box very similar to the to the greenhouse, and then we've got alphabet letters here. Oh, we've got it in a bag. I apologise. I apologise. Yes, please do. Gosh, I see what you mean about elephants, but... It, 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 <laughs> you're not messing about. And then this is still cross-stitch, look. Then we've got some black work, which we're going to talk about in a minute. You see here it says, Stitched for Jane Greenoff oh. by her CSG friends. That's because the original of this book was stolen oh, by somebody no. at the quilt fair. Well, I have a whole conversation regarding that, and I'm not doing that today. <laughs> okay. But unfortunately, I, I heard a wonderful expression from Ricky Timms, because when I was selling his fabric at probably the same one, a large amount had been stolen off the table, and he turned around and said, that's for their conscience, yes. not mine. Yes, absolutely. But what a lovely way that you've so got I, your friends being the, able to the, remake that Well, for on you. the Friday of the show, having gone, this gone astray, I was writing things on Facebook, and I think a sixth version was publishable, because I was very, very angry and upset, because it's 11 months' work. Oh, um, darling. Um, anyway, by the Sunday of that show, the Cross Stitch Guild members had got together secretly and organised another one to be stitched in time for the knitting and stitching show. Oh. So I was very touched. I tell you, this community, the, when they the, pull I together, and then, they are incredible. When we went to, to do another weekend, the members who didn't get involved in the first one, who are crossed to be excluded, did one for me. So this is mine. Oh, how beautiful. And each page is signed. This is the black work page. This is a CC work, which is where the background is stitched rather than the stitching, if that makes any sense at all. That's from Assisi in Italy. This is Hardanger embroidery. Now, when you think, oh, I've never done Hardanger, the point of this project is that you're working it like a lesson. You're starting with basic cross stitch, and it's lots of detail, lots of stuff to tell you all about it. This is pattern darning. Jane, I'm just looking at your, your charts on these. They are incredible. If I get one end... Yeah, we, so we'll have to do it that way because we're not allowed to touch the same thing. But look how beautiful that is. It's so gorgeous. And the detailing on it is so incredible. And, the and then when you marry that up with the finished product, it's absolutely delightful. Each page delightful. Is, is a back and a front. So if you can see there... And I love the fact you've got an, a darned um, bead on that one as well. Yes. And then but you can see the stitch. charts are so beautifully done. And then we can, if we can flick back to that little page, yes, I find just to show you. people that they can marry the two together. There you are. And I love the fact you've got that little B in the corner over there, which is a loose little, is it a button or a, oh, it's so It's a beautiful. little charm, that one. It's absolutely gorgeous. Because I have to say, your charts here are absolutely brilliant. Well, I hope so. 
I mean, these days, you know, there's no excuse, is there, anymore, with, the, with the computer technology. You know, you can, yeah. you know, I don't scan things in. I draw things still. But, but being able to colour them with the, with the computer, with the, the threads I use, um, and, of course, add the extra stitches and things, it makes an enormous difference. So this is the book. So the idea of this is that when you get it, you don't panic. You work the front cover... Well, you've got these wonderful instructions. Yes, well, I hope so. Telling you exactly I mean, how to do read, all of that. Yeah, you, uh, well, I'm always, a, I, I feel I'm a little bit of a, a novice in all of these things. So if I can read this and understand it, I think you've got everybody covered. Good. We've good. had a lovely message in for you from oh. Kerry. Hello, Kerry. Good Hello, morning. Kerry. Good morning. Morning. She's saying good morning, Jane and John. She's loving watching your demos, Jane. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And she's saying cross-stitching has kept her sane the last few oh, months. And me. Trust me. <laughs> and me. What would we do if oh. we didn't have it? I, I, I don't know what we would do. I don't know. So what are we getting in this kit? We've got these okay. wonderful sets of instructions here, which are very, very clear. I'll grab those. Remember what I said about pre-sorted threads? So your threads are pre- You can see it takes lots and lots. Um, they're pre-sorted so that you don't get any of these colours muddled. You know, when you get home from work and you sit down to sort your threads in electric light, there's every chance I can prove it because I stitched a roof of a little house in Stowe in dark green instead of grey <laughs> in electric light. So I know that you can't tell. So these, you've got the Gill phone number on there and you've got the name Now, what numbers. time is that number answered from and to? Because it's an 800 number. Right. And there's always an answering machine at the other okay, end. OK, great. We don't want people ringing you at 11 o'clock at night going, people Jane, use, I've used the wrong colour. Yeah, people used to. People in the days when the business was run from home, yes. I would get calls at three in the morning from Australia. <gasps> no. Oh, yes. Oh, you must have loved that. I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, the instructions that come with this, just to give you a glimpse on how brilliantly well these instructions are written, you lovely? can just see it gives you all the details on how to do all of that. It gives you the cut along this line section, You've got all these wonderful, Al is it Algerian eyes? Yes, right, that's it, that's it. Gosh, it's beautiful. And it gives you all of these, and then what it does is it mentions the chart there. So when you turn to the chart, it says chart four, and voila, you've got chart four over there. So it's very, very user-friendly, and it gives you where you're turning. And then you've got this wonderful collection of chart pages here as well. And you can see each, p each page of the, book, of the sewn book, if I go to here again, Right, just open that. What, what's happening is that each one of these chunks is two, so that when you fold it, if I can just turn it over the other way for me just directly. No, oh, sorry, the, the whole thing. Back of the charts. Yeah, exactly. If you could imagine, you would just fold down the middle and that will give you your outside cover. It means that you don't see the backs of your stitches. So if you, if you show the back cover there, you can see, so that's your chart Yes, you can see. We're going to have to just wait. The lovely Joe is going to get the right, lovely perfect Joe. angle. We'll just smile sweetly for our viewers. There you are. Hello. So you can see that when you fold um, your page, you're going to get that, that effect. I mean, it, it really is not difficult. The difficult is... So if you open that up now, yeah, I think we'll be lovely. able to see the two together. There you are. You can see how it works. And obviously the inside pages, when you've completed an inside page, I'll just pick that one for, for want of argument. Can we do that one? Oh, yes, of course you can. Because then we can go, go in order as we go. Hang on then, let's just go. If you take that one, that's one this half of here. it, and that's the back of that page. It means that you don't see so any backs. So effectively, you're folding exactly. your, your fabric in half, and one side will be that page, Yes. And the other side will be that page, exactly. which is exactly your pages yes. two and three in the book. It means that when people flick through your work, now I smack hands when they do it to me. When people look at something I've stitched like that and go, immediately look at the back, I smack them. Gently, obviously. <laughs> because I think those who seek deserve to find. Do you know that I think that that is a, a lost art these days, being able to clip someone and get away and still be <laughs> as popular as you are, Jane? I think that's a wonderful talent of yours. There you are. So there's the pre-sorted, as I said, the threads. It means when you get your parcel, you can get cracking. Exactly. And you're getting the wonderful, this is 
linen. This is linen. And, and you're but you've got all the wonderful pages, the pages also in linen well. as well. That's right. So you've got all those it's pages here. It's slightly different colour inside. But you'd um, want that, wouldn't well, you? Oh, yes. Because I mean, you'd it, like the colour to be a different colour. Absolutely. And you've got lots of gold needles with your packet. Yes, I saw those. I've put them. There we there go. There they are. So you've got all the gold needles there as well. Two microns, same as a grenade. Absolutely. You know what I'm going to call you? you Grenade Jane from now on, <laughs> don't you? Let me pop that. Which I love that. Such a fabulous kit. There we are. But now we're going to go to that gorgeous Blackwork Street. Aha, uh -huh. right. Now the first thing I said to you when I saw that was, doesn't that look like Liberty? Yes, the Liberty Great building. Great Marlborough Street. Yes, yes. So that, build, that, that picture you're seeing there is Blackwork embroidery. Blackwork and cross stitch, obviously. And Blackwork um, originated or um, became famous, I think would be fairer. This is uh, a picture. If I just pop it on the table, so Joe's got Course. two chances. Um, this is a picture, uh, a detail from a painting done by Holborn the Younger. Um, and it was effectively attempting to imitate lace. So what it is, is basically back stitch and running stitch combined, mostly running stitch. And the idea is that it looks the same back and front. Yours does. Well, like Mine this, definitely we, didn't. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you work this properly... Indeed. If you work this properly, you do what's called double running stitch. And that means that you would do a running stitch, leaving gaps, and you come back and fill in the gaps. And that means that the back and front look the same. If you use back stitch, the back doesn't look the same. Now, I'm not saying what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just saying that's how Holbein works. Now, in the case of the sampler that I'm showing you here, I'm going to open the packet to show you the chart. That is worked in Holbein stitch in double running and a combination of back stitch. And the reason for that is that inevitably when you're doing backwards and forwards like that, there will be a point at which you end up a blind alley. And there isn't anywhere to go unless you do a back stitch. So it is a combination of both. Now, is this one of those that you could actually put in a double-sided frame if you wanted if you, to? If you, if you did true if you didn't back do stitch, it as, as poorly as yes. I did. <laughs> if you did true back stitch, you could put glass back in front. Gosh. Now that is the chart. Wow. I love the fact you've done it so large as well. It's really well, user-friendly yes, it's a nice, that way. And you've got different keys for different bits. Uh, could you minimise that and make it smaller if you wanted to? You could, well, of course, that's Obviously the with joy the... of counting, is that you can reduce the size, the, the, make the fabric count bigger. Yes. If you work this on 40 count fabric, mm -hmm. you know, it would be a third of the size. Gosh. And would look very beautiful. Of course. Of course. Tiny work. You may go look. blind and insane in the well, process, yeah, but <laughs> what a beautiful piece it'll be. And there's your linen. Gosh. Again, now you can tell that this came from Zweigot and Zawitzki because there's their trademark oh. on the selvage, the orange line. And there's the black and the gold and the colours for the various brickwork. And the reason this design happened, there's always a reason, isn't there, why I get up to things, is my husband and I were in Poland and went to Warsaw and were standing in this beautiful old square um, looking at with amazement at these beautiful old buildings to discover they were built since the war. They'd all been flattened, really? completely flattened. Oh, you know, of course, Warsaw was of course. Flattened. Um, and in fact, these buildings were recreated and how they knew what they did look like was they used Canaletto's paintings. Because there was no, pho no photographs, no plans. And it was staggering to be in this area on old flagstones, surrounded by buildings that looked like that, they were. That had been as built I looked the 50s. at them, yes. As I looked at them, they were covered in these painted patterns. And I thought that's a Blackbird project. Out came the camera. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't resist it. It but had to happen. But inspiration like that does happen everywhere, it does, doesn't, doesn't it? it? And it was just an absolute. You know, it was a. It, uh, there was no no brainer. I think is what you call it. Is that it, how much it? you're charging for that? Pass, not my department. So what an exceptional are. price. I'm sorry, I hadn't noticed how much that was. That is such a good price. So it for is something a, so beautiful. It is a pretty thing. And of course, you can, 
you know, some some have done it as is, mm. some have extended it further <gasps> and done more, and two or three people have done individual buildings, oh, which is brilliant. very effective. Very effective. So that's the little black work. Now somewhere... Oh, you've given me an idea there. I've got something. The house on this side actually yes. looks quite like my own. Well, there you are. Because it's tiny. It's a tiny, tiny little house that's an old muse house. That I'm looking at that and thinking, gosh, there you go. I'm not sure I could do it in black work, though. The back <laughs> will not be looking anywhere like Now, yours. the item in my hand is not for sale. Oh, yes, yes. I don't yes. want any phone calls, all right? This is just to show you. This is also black work. Oh, goodness me. If I shunt it so poor Jojo can Oh, get. Joe can find anything. There you don't go, you Joe. worry. He's really good at this. There, look at that. If I shunt it that way, oh, there. look at the So this detailing. is a little. This was actually worked by the late Jane Napier, um, one of our guild members who's sat in no longer with us. Now she's worked this in black work, using one strand of <gasps> space dyed silk. Oh my goodness! So black work doesn't have to be done in black, black. and gold. Traditionally, it was. Um, that's how in the Tudor period, etc would have been black and gold, but these days we see lots of very interesting black works. And I just thought that would interest you to see just how different something can look in black work. There you are. So the black work street, which we've shown you. That is beautiful. Is there, with its little drawing. Now what, what are we doing next? Odin? Well, I actually think we're, we're, almost, we're almost there. Where are we oh, now? Crikey. Right. Have I time to mention... Do you want to do a little demo? Uh, well, oh, we should mention that. That'd I'll just be mention the little box. <gasps> Look at the box. Now, this we have got this this time. If any of you want me to show a particular stitch, by oh, the way, do let me know for the next... when I'm on again at Oh, 11. that's a good idea. We can all... Do, anybody who wants to drop Jane a message for a demo, she's here. You might as well. Yes. Drop us an email at studio dot at the studio at sewingstreet dot com, um, and Jane will be able to get that all prepped and ready I've for you fun. during the hour yes. while I'm doing the block of the week. Yes. Get, get, so me drop a... us a message if you've got anything specific you'd like Jane to show you at our ten o'clock show. Fine. And you can prepare yes. that while I'm doing my block of the week. So this I was a bit is... worried that we'd be having nothing for you to do I during that time. Plenty. This is the, the, the Flair Etui box. Now, this comes boxed as well, rather like the greenhouse did. And this is what's so sweet about it. Is that yours over there? No, that's a, that's a greenhouse one. Yes. This is... I think you, a lot of you are familiar with exploding boxes. That's all this is. Um, but it's stitched and made up. There's a little needle book. There's a little space where you can put a saying or a surprise. You've got your needle sizes. Again, you've got gold needles popped in there. Notice that gold needles don't make your fabric mark. That's another wonderful reason for using them. You never get rust marks on your material. Oh, gosh. And there's your lid. So this is a great fun project. And again, I mean, obviously it's a considered purchase, but it's something to stick but on your desk. But it's so beautiful. And again, you've sorted all your threads out. Absolutely. Yes, you see, it, it's... It's kinder. So I mean, all not every kit is done like that. Oh my goodness! And you've got the beads. Yes, seed beads. Nice little seed beads. These are beautiful. Only oh, got a. You've got a little bee. Yes, he's there. And a butterfly. Oh my goodness! You see that? I've got a bee in that one. There you oh, go. and you've got all these threads as well. The variegated. Some space dyed silk. So again. these are the. This the is the felt, felt that you were mentioning yes. on yeah. the inside, and then you've got some wadding. You've got your beautiful linen. There's so much of it. Well, if you could just send me a piece of chart, I can show you something. If you'd grab the chart, then I haven't touched it. There we go. Look at this. Oh, and you're getting two of your gold needles as well. How long do these needles last? Well, I don't know. None of yours have worn out yet? Well, I've never taken the gold off one. Now, Sue Hawkins, uh, she's a very fine embroideress who does lots of work on canvas. She reckons that she can use a, one of our gold needles for six months continuity on canvas before she shifts the gold. I mean, obviously the needles Gosh. are not solid gold, they're nickel no, no, underneath. No, of course, of course. To be strong. Um, but yes, so this is your chart, look. If I put oh, it on wow, the table, we've gorgeous. got two, three seconds to do this. But there you are, this is printed for you, ready to go. And you just stitch it all on, the ch on one piece of fabric and then cut it out. 
there's some of the stitches you're going to need. The rest are obviously in, in, the, in the instructions. So it's a, it's a smashing thing to make. And it's definitely got an, a wow factor, hasn't it? it if you hold it up does. and you go, everybody oh, goes beautiful. wow. <laughs> but I have to say, what I love about your patterns is that it is very, very explanatory. And not being a, a, a cross stitch myself, I can definitely I know exactly see. how you marry the two up with the chart and good, everything. Good. And your beading work is just exquisite. Oh, these are brilliant. There we are. So. What beautiful kits. So, Jane, we are going to go for a little break now. You've got a little hour off where you can go and put your feet, feet up. up. If you're bored and you'd like to cut up some fabric to no, do the block you. of the week with me, no, you're most you. welcome. You Don't want you to, to make me, and I'm not going to. <laughs> so, we're going to go and change the set now. It's been an absolute joy, and I'm so excited. I've still got another hour with another you. Hour. Yes, it's like Christmas has come early. So, drop me a line if you want me to show but you anything. But please, any questions, drop them down to Sewing Street. Sorry, studio at sewingstreet.com. Um, and then Jane can do any demos that you'd like at our 10 o'clock show. Um, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you.
always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello, I'm John Cole Morgan and welcome to us this morning. This is Sewing Street and I am so excited. We are doing our sashings and borders um, section of our block of the week. Now some of you may not have seen our block of the week before so let me tell you what it is. We, you can take part now because all of the fabrics that you see on the three beautiful quilts behind me are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've got this gorgeous grey and pink and green combination. We've got the beautiful brights combination here, which I adore. And then we've got, of course, our fabulous blue collection over here. And all of these are available on our website. We've got a big bundle for you of everything and we've got our sashings and borders. But let me show you what we're getting in each one of these um, each one of the quilts that you can see each and every single block in here as well. So before we get to that, each week we have had a different aspect of the quilt. So we're at the very last week, week 13, so you're getting the set of instructions to do all the sashings and the borders. And what I love is, now if we've got some savvy shoppers out there, everybody's been asking, are we gonna do the fabric on its own? Um, and we're not, but Look at the size of this panel. It's vast. I think it's 140 centimeters one way and 135 centimeters the other. It is huge, but 
the borders. We've got a lot of sashing. So each one of these panels, um, each one of these borders and sashing panels are roughly two and a half, three times what you were getting on the normal week blocks that you were using before. Um, and so many of you have got so much fabric left over as well. But this is the final installment that you need to finish off this quilt. And I've just realized I've covered up the code that I need to give. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, this is the vintage colorway that I've just shown you there. So the sashing and borders. So if you are following us every week, this is the last section that you need. Getting so, so many of you involved in this, which I've loved. Because when we started lockdown, everybody was a bit, and we're all a bit like, oh, what's going on? But we wanted something that we could all do together as a community. Because I think as a community, we always work so much better when you've got a communal goal and we can share our blocks and share our experiences and any questions and problems you've had, you very kindly pop them on, on the fans page and I've been able to answer the question either at the time or I've taken your question and brought it on to explain in the block of the week of the following week which has been great because some of the questions that you've had I hadn't even thought of which is great to have that feedback and the great thing about our YouTube page is every single one of our videos each week you've had more than an hour usually of every single block being able to be made you can see that you've got all the different blocks made as you go and each and every single one of the blocks each week is available on our page and they're separated out as a page. And as far as I know, I think the amazing Hayley B has actually separated them and there's a section in the, in the um, YouTube page that says block of the week and all 13 of the videos are on there. So what now? Perfect. So we've shown you the vintage one because the vintage has been the most popular of all of our colors. This one is our, this is brights. This is brights. So the quilt we've got behind me here, it's the brights colorway there. So again, you're going to get this wonderful set of instructions with very clear instructions of how you actually do everything. And then you're getting this amazing panel. And let me show you just how huge this panel is. Look how much fabric you're getting. It is so, so huge. So you're getting three different colors in this because you've got your cornerstones, which in this one is your fabric two. Um, and then you've got your fabric one and you've got your fabric four. So you don't have any fabric three because you don't need it for the sashings and the borders. So everything you need for your sashings and your borders is all in this one panel. But as you can see, the panel is vast. There is so much fabric in this panel compared to what you were getting in your normal weekly panels. So you definitely will have more than enough there. Now, most of you have already come to the end of your quilt and I hear that you're all ch already checking out on your sashings and bindings, which I'm loving because it's such a fun project. And it's nice to get to that end bit where you can actually then just put everything together and get it finished up. And then very last, but certainly not least, we've got our blue colorway, which is this quilt over here. Again, you're getting a wonderful set of instructions. If I held it the right way around, that would be really handy. Getting our fabric, the pattern here, but then the bundle as well. And again, such a huge amount, such a huge amount of fabric here as well. You can't even see me there so much. So it's as wide, almost as wide as it is long. 140 centimeters wide and I think it's 140 centimeters wide and 135 long. I know the 135 is right, but you can see such a huge amount of fabric. Whoops. I don't know how I'm supposed to fold these big bits. I struggle with fat quarters. There we go. Now, if you're just joining us today and you haven't taken part on the block of the week before and you'd like to, you'll be able to go on the website and you'll be able to get each and every single one of those blocks in the colorway you like available. But let me first show you what each of the blocks look like. We're going to start. Now remember, when if you did get the bundle, this is blocks 1 to 12 in the bundle. You will need to get the sashings and borders uh, as well. Otherwise, you won't be able to finish. So next, we're going to show you all the blocks that we've got for the vintage colorway here. Now, I think some of these are going to be out of order, but I'm just going to show you exactly which ones you're getting. So we're going to start. Look at them, because what we wanted to do was to be able to show you different skills and different techniques to be able to get you to improve in your quilting journey, to be able to get your scant quarter inch improved, to get your 
half square triangles. Well, if you can't do half square triangles at the end of this, then there's no hope. But it's just been such a fun project to be able to take part, to be able to be involved with. And so many of you, hundreds of you have joined in every week. It's been fabulous to be able to see each and every finished block. It's been so good. And I think this was our first block that we did. And then our last block, I'm not sure which one our last block was, but we've just built our skills up through the weeks going all the way through. So this is the vintage colorway here. Um, and all 12 of the blocks that we did in our quilt are all going to be available in that wonderful bundle. And each week you've got the set of instructions as well as the panel. Um, and then obviously don't forget we've got our YouTube tutorial of each one as well. So, and that will make this quilt here when it's completely finished take the set apart completely and you can see it's such a beautiful beautiful quilt so many different blocks available maybe sometimes you can't really see it we'll go there we go that's much easier and you can see all the blocks in there there they are numbered for you so you can see the top left hand corner is number one two beneath that's number two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then the one that doesn't have a number is our block 12. But you can just see how your skills would have grown all the way through, going through that different process. It's been brilliant. I absolutely love taking part in that. It was blue. Yeah, just checking. And then we can see all the different colours that we've got in our blue colourway. So that was, I know, block two, but after that I'm going to stop because I can't remember which block was which one. But look at this, but you're making all 12 of them and each one goes and you build your skills up each week, getting all the different blocks together. It's just such a lovely way of being able to expand your knowledge, learn together with other people, be able to see all the blocks that everybody's made. And what I've loved is some people have taken it and put their own little twist on them and done them ever so slightly differently as well, which I love because you've got that wonderful input of people doing things the way they think would be best. And I love the fact that people can do that. And then you come down to slightly more complicated blocks like number 12 here. Isn't that just fabulous? Such a lovely block that. So we can have a look then and see the um, the blues quilt over here. Oh, we got on the st wonderful. Look at that, and you can see all the different blocks again, and they look so different in every colourway, don't they? I'm still tempted to actually buy a few of the different colours in the different all three colourways, and to be able to make a whole mix match mash quilt, being able to get them all looking different and doing each block differently. And number three, you can see number three, you've got that secondary circular pattern using the dark dots, which I was hoping to get right. So, and then last but certainly not least, we've got our brights colorway as well. Um, this one has been very popular too. We've got all the different blocks available of these. And you can just tell they all look so different. And you can see all these different blocks coming through here. You can just see all these gorgeous different ways of doing it. And when I mentioned about the secondary pattern in the block there, you've got the darks forming a little circle on there. I tried to make sure my little eye of detail was keeping you all entertained through the whole process. I've just found the missing vintage blocks I was looking for a few seconds ago. <laughs> and then that was number 12 then. So this is in the other bundle over there for the vintage, because I was literally looking for those a few minutes ago, going around going, oh, where are my blocks? So that was the vintage colour, the brights colourway, and you can see that this is the brights quilt over here. If I stand over here. Such a lovely colourway. Now I know this is the final week and a lot of you are just joining us. So this is now going to be our sashings and binding, uh, sashings and border quilt. So I'm going to show you what we're actually making. What is a sashing? What is a border? What are we doing? So you'll see over here, let me find that very block. Oh, that was very well placed. So we've now all made our block here. So you can see that's our block here. 
And then we're asking you, well, I hear people asking, what is the sashing and what is the border? So the sashing is the bits that go around each of your block to be able to get the center section right. And then the border is this, this dark border around the outside. So that is what we're going to be doing now. Now, before we get to that point, let me show you. So the most, oops, sorry. Me, throw things around the set? Never. Now, every single one of you have got blocks that are different sizes. The first thing I want you to do is do not beat yourself up if your block's not exactly 15 and a half inches. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, and I promise you, it really doesn't, because I'm going to show you a few tricks on how I have found that it makes your life a little easier. The very first thing is that I need you to do is to take every single one of your blocks and measure them. Measure the height, measure the width, make sure, sorry, the length and breadth, height, width, Measure the two sizes, however you want to call it. Measure it out. Work out exactly how big all of your blocks are. Then get a piece of paper and write down, put them in order. So ideally, this is the way that I suggest you put the quilt. But let's say you've got three blocks that are 15 inches, and then you've got three blocks that are 15 and a quarter, and three blocks that are 15 and a half, and then you've got three blocks that are 15 and three quarters. So what you're going to do, a quarter of an inch is not difficult to lose on a quilt of this size, because as you're going down, you can easily lose that. So what I'm suggesting is two, there are two or three ways of doing this. You can either create little sections and rows of three blocks that measure the same. And that way then you can put them all together, the sashing this way, will be slightly smaller because this will be the height of your finished blocks. So if you've got three blocks exactly the same height, all you do is you go and you cut your sashing the same height as the block. And then the difficulty comes in on this section here, but we'll get to that. So it will go across first. So if you've got these at, say, 15 and a quarter, you will cut your sashing strips at 15 and a quarter, and you would then sew these to the edge. And that is steps... Sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head. You are looking at steps one to five. You would do steps one to five with your strip, your side sashings being 15 and a quarter. If you're at 15 and a half, fantastic. So there are many ways of doing it. That's one way is that you separate your sections like that. The other way is two seconds. Please don't fall off. Nope, you're going to fall off. There we go. The other way of doing it is you just trim it down. Now that is easy to do when you haven't got points. So let's look at this one. This is the most complicated block. And my complicated block, this came in. So this is a really perfect example. It's 15 and a half this way and 15 and a quarter that way. So it's not square. Now, most people's blocks aren't square. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do, without being critical to yourself, because you need to be kinder to yourself as a quilter, is turn the block over and have a look and see why you are out. It's important to learn from this process. So you need to take a ruler. Um, do we have a ruler? Oh, there we go. Got one. And what I want you to do is I want you to measure each one of your triangles. Measure what the finish size is. Once you've got, oh, where am I going with my ruler? There we go. So measure what your finish size is. Check that back to the pattern. See where you've gone wrong. Turn your block over. Now you can see over here, my seams there, that one is a lot thicker than that one. So that's going to play a role into why my quilt is a different, my block is a different size. Now, the important thing with this is that it's, this is a learning tool. You need everything that you did. If you look at your very first block to your very last block, and 
That's a block. That is not messing around. That is a really serious block. Going around and checking where you've gone wrong means when you do the block again or you do another block, you just pay a little bit more attention to the area where it perhaps hasn't worked out quite as well. But be kind to yourself. It doesn't matter. No one has ever given a quilt back that you've made for them and said, oh, that, that point doesn't match. I don't want it. Because they look at your quilt and they say, my goodness, that's made with such love and such care. Hair. and if they don't they're ungrateful and send me the quilt I will love it but it's just it, you've got to just know where you've gone wrong and when you've gone right make sure that you give yourself a little pat on the back and when you've gone wrong make sure you give yourself a little pat on the back because you tried you did it and you tried so over here I can see that my quarter inch is completely out on this blue piece of fabric over here it's dreadful it's more than, a th more than an eighth of an inch, but less than a quarter. You can see that's my quarter inch seam there. But if I look on my pink section, that is perfect. So I have half a biscuit for that one. But then when I look at this one over here, that seam's not even gonna hold with this yellow. That was just online telly at its best. Look, I'm, not, I'm quarter of an inch there, but look at that. Now we all do it. We all get to that point and that's okay. So you've got options. You have got so much fabric left over from all of your blocks because that is just the way we designed it, that you would have fabric left over. That if you do have a block, let's say you measure everything and they all measure 15 and a quarter, but one block measures 14.75. Redo the block that's 14.75. That is the only thing that I would suggest is that everything is uniform bar one, maybe two blocks. Why don't you remake those two blocks and look where you went wrong first and there's no criticism in it. It's learning, and I don't want people beating themselves up about it. It's been quite a... I've just been sad to read that people have been so upset that they've got their blocks wrong. You've tried! Do you know how many people who haven't even tried, and you've done it? And just because it doesn't measure 15 and a quarter doesn't mean it's not beautiful. It's just not the right size per the pattern. That doesn't mean it's not the right size and it's not beautiful. So go and measure all of your blocks. See where you are. If they all measure... Within 15 and a quarter and 15 and a half, you're absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. If you've got one block that's considerably smaller, go back and redo that block, perhaps, if you want to. Otherwise, you add a wider sashing at that point. Or if your blocks are much bigger, you add a smaller sashing at that point. No one's going to be upset about it. And once you've quilted it, no one's going to know. So there we go. That's my little lecture over on why you could have potentially gone wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm doing this in vintage. Perfect. Um, right, where is my rotary cutter? Because I've been very organised this, this morning. There we go. That is the longest ruler. Right, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut up your fabric. Now, there are very ways that various ways that you can do this. There is no right or wrong. You do it how you like. I've seen people cut these by hand. I've seen people cut these with rotary cutter. Um, I usually have a longer ruler, but we'll do this one for now. Either. Whoops. Sorry, you don't need to see the top of my head, but I'm at that angle that you can't really get to cut it if you're not right up close and personal. Now what we've done very cleverly here is that we've got our fabric four just above what the actual fabric is. The reason we did that is because we wanted you to have as much fabric as humanly possible. Um, and that way then you'll be able to get that little bit of extra fabric out from the whole process, which I was very pleased they could do it. But by this stage of the game, you know what your Fabric 4 looks like, you know what your Fabric 1 looks like, and you know what your Fabric 2 looks like. It just makes your life that little bit easier, not having a little bit of fabric taken away by the numbering on there. And of course, our vintage colorway is, of course, in the lead. But I have to say, the thing that I have loved most and that I was most proud about, and I actually did shed a little tear, was actually having my name on salvage. That's just such a grown-up thing to have. 
It's only those very clever people like Davy Shaw that have things like that. But I got it too. I'm very excited. So it's just something really silly like that that thrilled me no end. Now what I do is I separate my fabric out. Oh, somebody's covered this in glue. Oh God, there's loads of glue on this. Who did that? Yeah. Now, when you are cutting this, I would say to you, when you get to the end over here, do not slice through your white. Leave that as one piece. Reason being is that we have graphed this very, very carefully to make sure that you can get the most efficient use of your fabric as possible. So you can see I've just got to the end there and I've not cut past it. And then I'm just going to separate my fabric four out completely. Oh, helps if I get this right. Because I like separating my fabrics first to make sure I know what's what. Oh. Right, so now you've got this really odd shape of fabric number one, which is quite normal, that's what you're expecting. So I'm going to trim this off very quickly and just say to you, so what you're going to do now is you've got four border pieces to cut out of fabric four. So. If you have a little bit of white like that into your fabric, it does not matter. As long as you're not within a quarter of an inch seam, that'll be hidden in the seam allowance, so don't worry. So what you're going to do now is you've got this wonderful big piece of black fabric. This is now my fabric four, I think it was. It'll be on the top of my salvage. Yes, fabric four. So what you're going to do now is you're going to cut these into the strips that you need all the way down. Join them together and put your border strips together. You will have multiple joins in them. It doesn't matter. It's patchwork. It's the whole concept of patchwork is having pieces put together. So that is the piece of border that you're going to do. You literally just cut this into strips, the width that per the pattern, sew them together end to end, and then once you finish the sashing section, you'll put them down the side, and then you'll put them at the top and the bottom. So it's now I have done, for myself and the way that I've written the pattern, is I have started the sides first. For me, I prefer to do the sides first and then the tops. That's what the measurements are as well. It just makes life a little bit easier. You can do it the other way around if you like, but then you're going to need to make your sides longer uh, because, and then the tops shorter. But it doesn't really matter one way or the other, but I prefer to do the sides first and then the top. And it's very interesting because there are different rules as to, there are all these rules and I never know what they are, but there are all these descriptions on the best way of being able to do borders and when a finished quilt what's best to look at and for me it's a case of I've got a clean line at the bottom and a clean line at the top I always think that makes your quilt look better and it looks wider and all that silliness so next we are now down to our pink fabric now our pink fabric here is fabric two so what you're going to do for your fabric two come on so this will be yellow on the brights so I'm gonna have to just I can't Give my head being in your shot then, but you try and get the... Oh my goodness, that was a bit silly of me. You can see I've just cut a huge chunk, not a huge chunk, but a little chunk out of my white fabric. We'll all do it, it doesn't matter.
Oh my goodness, I really think we'd make quite a lot of money if we actually just put the talk back that goes on in the ears on the thing here. I literally, for the last th two, three seconds, I've been doubled over on the actual set, laughing by what is being said in my ear. Sorry. Right, moving back onto this. Back in the room, back in the room. So I'm just trimming off this here. And then, there we go. There we go. So when you've got your, your, your fabric two cut out, now your fabric two are the cornerstones between your sashing. So again, that is all listed in the pattern what size you've got to cut this to. And you'll cut that into a big strip. But also, if you're a, sh a savvy quilter like I am, you actually don't need to cut all of it. You've got quite a lot of this fabric left over. So I would start on one end and go to the other and cut off what you need as you go. And all you're doing is once you've got your sashing. Now on this one, we obviously had to put fabric two in it. So you just trim that little bit off there. And then all I do now is whatever the width is in the pattern, you will then go and you will cut your sashing strips out of this. Now, if you have decided that you have got different blocks and different sizes all the way along for your row one, if you've decided, if you decided that your blocks are, for, uh, say, 15 inches, I would still keep your cornerstones the same width. What you would need to do is on the sides, you would then keep your, your heights different. But what I would try and do is keep the sashing strips from here to here. Try and keep those as close to 15 and as a half as you can. And then get these to the width that they need to be. The reason is, is if you've got this bit being slightly narrower, that's fine. But if you've got them going this way, if you cut this to say 14 and a half, at the bottom of the quilt, they're 15 and three quarters, your quilt is automatically going to look a bit funny going like that. So what I would say to you is that you need to just then very easily, if you are gonna change the width on it, I would add an extra quarter of an inch on here than the size of your block, and then just ease that in as I show you how to do that later. But always keep your cornerstones the same size and the same height per the pattern if you can, and the width of your sashing strips the same. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier. So the borders I've explained, the cornerstones I've explained. So that's the fabric, and you're gonna have loads left over as well, so don't worry about that. And it's still, don't forget, you've got your quarter inch seam allowance. If you, um, you're actually just gonna use a, s sorry? Ooh. What was it? Oh yeah, yeah. So it's the, um, the quarter of an inch is quite normal. Exactly what you would do. We've spoken very briefly about um, scant quarter inches. Well, not very briefly, but quite extensively over the 12 weeks. Um, the quarter, a scant quarter inch. It might be easier for you to do a scant quarter inch all the way. But that's absolutely fine. Just do what is comfortable for you and see, once you've done your first row, how everything's lying. And then you'll be fine on that. Right, so we've now separated our three fabrics and we're all ready to go. The sashing is now where we become a little bit of a, not a problem, but we just take a little bit of time to work out. Now I'm not gonna cut these to the width per the pattern, that will be available in the pattern. Um, I'm going to cut these as three inches. I'm gonna do it over there, I'm gonna just cut them this way. The width isn't important, what is important is the length of it. So I'm just going to actually do this the other way. So I am going to trim this little section off, just check the height of it. I keep losing my pattern. Yes, that's right. So you can actually cut this bit off, that's not a problem, sorry. Didn't read the pattern properly. Right, so we are wanting a whole load of 15 and a half inch strips. 
So I'm going to cut these. This is not the size per the pattern. The pattern will tell you what size you need to cut these widthwise. I'm going to cut these at three inches. That's the wrong way round. So I'm cutting a full strip of three inches all the way along here. And then I'm going to break that down into my 15 and a half inch pieces. Okay, so remember that is not the size that you need to cut it for the pattern. The cutting, the width of the cut, uh, the, the width of the sashing is in the pattern. So you can double check that when you get your pattern. So don't follow these instructions when you're making the quilt because they will be wrong. And you won't have enough fabric if you do a three inch piece. Right, so I now am going to square up this edge because that's not really very square. And the easiest way I know how to cut a 15 and a half inch strip is taking my ruler, lining 15 and a half inches up there, lining my ruler up against the top, checking that's the width that it's meant to be, and this is not the width that's meant to be. And there we go. Right, so these are 15 and a half inches. Now I know, because I measured this earlier, that my block, where are you? My block is 15 and a quarter. Boom, 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 the whole world has ended. Sorry, I'm being facetious, forgive me. Oh, I'm using the wrong color panel, that's why. I was wondering why my white was so different. So this is 15 and a quarter. That's really annoying. <laughs> it's meant to be 15 and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut another piece of fabric. Now what I've loved about the social media side of things is watching how everybody has done different things. And one of the nicest things I've seen, I don't know whether this was on the social media page or somebody actually sent it to me, what they did was they didn't want to make such a big quilt. So what they did was they actually made a much smaller quilt using just six of the panels and six of the blocks. And what they did then was that they just bought the six blocks that they wanted, and they have made a lovely little quilt from that, which I love. I think that's such a nice way of doing it because it's so unique to them and what they want to do, which I loved. Now, what I would say when you are cutting these out, I would actually just draw a little plan first of how you're going to cut your white fabric out. Because I know as quilters, we want as much fabric out as we can possibly get out of this. So what I would suggest is lay your, your fabric number one out and just put a rough idea using paper if needs be, what the best way of cutting it out is. Because I've just cut that and I've realized I've actually not done it very well. And I think if you cut a couple this way, and then cut a whole load that way, I think you're gonna be able to get the best use of your fabric out of that. Where have I put my, there we go. So, we're going to pretend that this is 15 and a quarter and that these are 15 and a half. And what you're going to see is that my block is much smaller than my sashing. So when I come to sew this, it depends how big it is and how big your difference is. If you're more than a quarter of an inch, I would actually say cut your sashing down. If you are more than a quarter of an inch or more than half an inch, I would actually say to you potentially remake the block, unless you've got a whole row of them the same. But what I would do is you would just move your sashing ever so slightly up. So the difference, you've got half the difference here and you've got half the difference there, okay? Then what I would do is I'd put those on top of each other. So there are two ways of doing it. You can either do that where you've got half the difference there and half the difference there, 
Or you can start on one end, and this is the way I do it, but I don't make very flat quilts. So this is just, I'm going to show you the technique. It's not, it definitely is frowned upon by many people who are more experienced than I am, because I've done a lot of fudging. And I won't deny that the quilt we made for Her Majesty the Queen for her 90th, there was a little bit of what I'm about to show you, which is why the quilt looks so awful. It didn't look awful, but you know what I mean. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up my sashing over here perfectly, right? And I'm going to start, and I've got my quarter inch seam perfect. And then once I've done that, I get my needle down, so it's in the down position. Can we turn the aircon off? Yeah. Thank you. It's very, very cold in here all of a sudden. So what you do next is you then line this bit up on the very edge over here. So I line the edge up over here as well. So I've got this lined up perfectly. And then when you do that, you've got this little ripple of your fabric all the way in. And this is where you become a little bit of a, a stretcher, I like to call it. So what I do is I hold that, and I know that's lined up. Then I get the middle section, and I line the middle section up. And I'll have a tiny little lip in the fabric that I know that I've got to ease in. So the great thing with sewing machines is the piece that's on the bottom, because the feed dogs are, are pulling the fabric through, if you put a little bit of tension on this top piece, the fabric's being pulled in a little more on the bottom than it is on the top. So in order to do that, you can actually lose a quarter of an inch along 15 inches very, very comfortably. I do not recommend this as a usual practice, but if you're trying to hide a quarter of an inch inch or three, uh, three eighths of an inch, you can easily do this, but you will end up with ripples in your fabric. But it's, you know, it's that balancing act of what do you do that's best for you. And I just keep it going, I keep that lined up, I then pull the top bit up, pull the bottom and then let the feed dogs suck in some of that difference. And, oh, I've done it. So now, oh, what I've done, you can see I've got a ripple there. So if anybody ever gets a ripple there, the reason is, you can see on this side, it's perfectly flat. But over here, you've got that tiny little ripple. If I, I've been very ambitious there by getting all the ripple in the first little stretch, which makes a very obvious ripple. But if you then, and you can see the rest is very flat, but if I'd eased that in the whole way down that quilt edge, it would have eased in perfectly. So you're kind of aiming to make sure that you ease it in over the whole length of the block. And when you, when you push that out, you do that, set your seam, and then you just roll that over if you want to, or press it open, whichever's easiest for you. But once I've steamed it and pressed it, can you see that ripple? Now be honest, can you really not, can you see the ripple or not? Oh, the iron is spitting out water. So if I put this back on the dark, on the dark board, you can't really see that ripple. So my 15 and a quarter inch block fits perfectly into my 15 and a half inch seam. Obviously the width is different, check the pattern. And on the back, you can only see a tiny little bit of that ripple to do it. So it's just, that's one of the things, there's, that's one, all the classes that I've ever done, I've never ended up being shown how to do that. So I know that that's something that I've never known how to do. And I figured it out myself doing it that way with tons of YouTube research and different watching other people the way they do it. So what I'll try and do now is I'm going to try and ease this in the whole way along the block. I don't then get it all in one little section. So I'm hoping for everybody who's got slight differences in their block, this will make it feel a little bit more achievable to get that corrected along the quilt. Because it's not something I want people to be upset about. Being a quarter of an inch out doesn't mean your quilt block isn't lovely. It doesn't mean you don't love what you've done. It doesn't mean you haven't learned, what, learned something new, a new skill. It just means that you're ever so slightly ways of potentially improving as you go along. But be kinder to yourself. Don't beat yourself up because you haven't got your quarter inch exactly right. Or when you were cutting, you were having a bad day that day and you cut maybe 
an eighth of an inch smaller than you could have. It doesn't matter. This is to bring you joy and for you to be able to enjoy it. And I can assure you, it's probably a lot better than some of the things I've done at two in the morning. Now that is exactly what I was looking for there. I'm hoping, there you go. So you see that ripple is all the way down. You can see I got it in over there. So it's a lot further down. But that's what you're looking for, is to pass that ripple all the way down, that it's not focused in one area. And I know that I'm definitely not going to win any awards for my um, easing in of my fabric section there. But I don't mind because I'm not doing it for an award. I'm doing it because it's for love and to be able to give something during this terrible time to somebody that I care about to enjoy. And you can see I um, have been able to get that in perfectly. And as I press that, you can see there's no ripple on there at all. Where over here, I've got a little bit of ripple at the beginning, whereas this one, I've eased it out ever so slightly. So you can see over here, you've got that little bit of a bow. And what you would do then is if your next block came along, I'm going to grab another one over here. Bum, bum, bum. Now, this is not the correct order either. Please follow your pattern. As I e put the next one in, if I'm easing it in to make it work, I do exactly the same thing. Otherwise, I just attach that perfectly and it works fine. So that is the way that I see that people can ease it. If your block is a little bit too big, if you've got a piece like this that has got no triangle points, and let's say this has come out at 16 inches, trim it down equally on all four sides. Don't hack off half an inch there and there because your block's going to look weird. But if you cut a quarter of an inch off all the way along there, if you're half an inch too big all the way around, that's a nice way of doing it. It becomes more problematic when you have, gosh, I'm being very organized today. Everything's everywhere. So if it becomes a bit more problematic if you've got a block like this. Now, what I would suggest, this block I know is 15 and a half that way and 15 and a quarter that way. Let's say for you it was a different size. What you need to look at for these is being able to make sure that you hit, because you've spent so much time on it, and if you can, you're wanting to make sure that these are the points that you measure from. So if I take my ruler, oh, wrong one. If I take my ruler and I measure from that point, if I can get my ruler the right way around, from that point there to that point there, I can see that that's 15, uh, 14, I'm going to call it 15 inches. So I know that however I put my block together, that to that is 15 inches. So if this seam allowance is a little bigger and this seam allowance is a little smaller, it doesn't matter because if I put my, knowing that that's a quarter of an inch in there, if I line that up like that, as long as I hit that point there, it doesn't matter. And I've got more than enough seam allowance here to get rid of to be able to make sure that I'm hitting that point there which is what you're wanting to do. So you can easily put that down on there. There's nothing else to watch for. If you've made your block and you've got, say, three quarters of an inch over here, you can trim this down by taking your ruler, lining up your quarter inch. In fact, I can do that right now. You can see I've got my quarter inch line at that triangle, my quarter inch line at that triangle, my quarter inch line at that triangle. So all I do now is I take this down, and I do that because I don't need that bit there. That's my quarter inch there. And if I do that on all four sides, I reckon that this block will actually work. Because that's the, oops, so you can see there I'm a little bit out. There we go. I love the fact I don't have to clean the floor. So there we go. And if I measure across there, oh, helps if I get the right side of the ruler. So now I'm down to 15 and 3 eighths, and I'm more than happy with that. And if I trim it on this side, and I've got it 15 and 3 eighths, that's absolutely fine, because all I do is when I've got my 15 and a half inch uh, sashing to do, 
I'm going to easily be able to lose that 16th on this side and a 16th on this side. No one's even going to notice. So this is the way that I suggest you do it. If anybody has got any major problems, drop me a message. I'll try and help where I can. Um, and I'm just hoping that that's going to have helped you on this whole process. And it's, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. We're not doing it for perfection. We're doing it to be able to enjoy it, love it, and to be able to share an experience together, to be able to have some fun. Now, at this point, you are going to have made your block and you're going to be wanting to do a little bit of binding. So, so with the kits that we've got, this is not going to come with enough fabric for your binding and your backing. But what I thought I would do is just give you a little bit of a tutorial on how to actually do your binding. Unfortunately, there isn't enough on there because it was just going to be too big and too big a project to do. But don't forget, we've got some fabulous extra wide backing fabrics. So you've got some fabulous colors being able to do that. So don't just keep checking out the website because there are some amazing colors that you can do. So we just I'm just going to do a little random bit of fabric testing for you here just to give you an idea as to what you're doing once you put the quilt together. It's going to be very, very rough and ready. So your, your binding is going to be two and a half inches wide. So that is the standard size most people use. Some people use two and a quarter. Some people have got binding machines on their on their uh, beautiful feet on their machines to do. So you've got your two pieces. Now I always try, I always do this, but let, you can do them as the side, you can do them at diagonal. And what I do is I leave my position of my needle in the middle of my machine. And what I'm aiming to do is, you're going to do a little press line on your top piece of fabric. And I'm aiming, because of course now I've moved it, you want that point there and that point there to touch your background fabric and then you're going to sew on that little line as you go down. Now remember please be kind, I am on live television. What the chances of this matching is very slim. Oh, that wasn't too bad actually. What's going on here? There we go, there was a bit of thread caught there. So at that point, once I've got that in, before you cut it, turn your fabric back and check that it's right. And when it's not right, it normally means you've stitched it either the wrong way round or you've got it a little bit, something's gone a bit awry. Then what I do is I cut a quarter of an inch from your seam line and I trim off my dog ears and these I free, I free it, I freehand it. And there we go, that's you done. But now to make the binding, I there are different arguments about this. I've seen so many comments about long armors preferred to the left or pressing your seams one way or the other. You do what works for you. Your long armor will make it work. Right, so I press my seam open, that's ready to go. And now to make the binding, you do that for as many pieces as you need. Then what you do is once you've joined all your pieces together, you're going to then press your fabric in half, or as close to half as you can get on national television. Wide, there we go. So you can see I didn't quite catch that. So you can, there we go. So you're going to press that in half all the way along. So the way I do it is I get it across my ironing board and I let it drop on the floor, and then I wind it back up afterwards. It just makes that there's no... Uh, twists in your binding because you can imagine when you're doing 600 inches of binding in one go. I think the biggest piece of binding I ever did in one go was 4,000 inches. I cut up about four meters of fabric in one go and just kept going. So you drop it all on the floor and then when you finish you just then start it like this and I just feed it like that so I end up with a massive ball of binding ready to go there. So now I have got somewhere around here two random pieces of fabric. Now we obviously have just used, you will use your quilt and your backing. I am just using two small pieces here. 
and your backing, now if you are going to a long armour, your backing normally needs to be at least three inches bigger than your front. Um, if you're quilting it at home yourself, you must decide how you do it. I always like my binding to be a little bit, uh, my backing to be bigger. Um, you do what works best for you. I am using the 8020 Hobbs uh, crib size 8020 wadding. But they've got, we've got loads of wadding on our website now, so do have a little check for that as to what we've got. Forgive me, sorry. I'm a bit conscious of time. <laughs> so that's why I'm throwing it on the floor. So we're going to say this is our front, that's our back. So I put my back on the back. You also then are going to use this fabulous 505 spray. So the 505 spray, what I prefer to do is I don't spray onto my back, I spray onto my wadding. I'm in an enclosed area, so we're going to pretend. I then take my back and I put the back. And the easiest way I find is I start on one end and then I smooth from the central line out because anybody who's used 505 spray before knows that you can end up with bubbles. So then you just smooth it all the way out. You then turn it round. Wonderful demo again. Are you listening? Got to have the can in my hand even if we're pretending. So I'm spraying 505 onto my wadding now. And I always do my wadding because I think that the wadding holds the glue a little better. And exactly the same. I start in the middle and I work out and go out that way to get as many of the little um, air bubbles that you can possibly have come out. And then I use my fabulous curved um, safety pins. Oh, and I've just stabbed myself on one. So be careful when you do do them because they do pop open in the little box for you. And then what I do with these is I pop these every sort of two, three inches into a little square. And the great thing about these pins is because it's got that curve in it, when you actually put the fabric through it, the fabric is still completely flat. Whereas if you used a normal safety pin, you wouldn't actually end up with a flat fabric. You would end up with... Um, the safety pin moving and manipulating the fabric as you go. I'm not going to put a huge amount of these in. I'm just going to put three of them in because it's not a huge amount of fabric. Almost stabbed my finger again there, doing really well. So there are two different sizes of these. I'm using the 38 millimeters, which are a bit bigger. We also double check the website for curved safety pins. We've got a 27 inch uh, millimeter one as well. Now to quilt this, you would just put this through the machine now, it does work better with a walking foot, so all I'm doing is I'm just sewing very simply, or should I say I am technically quilting at the moment. Now, when you are quilting and you are using a walking foot, one of my top tips, especially if you want to turn a corner, leave your needle down, drop your foot, rotate, sorry, lift your foot up. Once you rotate the fabric around, then just drop the foot again. We're not going to go too much into quilting, but I just wanted to give you a very, very quick demo once you've got your quilt made. And it gives you ideas of different ways of doing it. Oh, I'm about to hit a safety pin. Don't want to be doing that. Now, this machine doesn't come with a walking foot as a standard feature like some of the machines do. So you can get them separately. I'm going to take this out because I timed that very, uh, placed that very badly. There we go, and you can tell because I haven't used a walking foot, I now have a lovely pleat over there. So pleat and all, I am now done. I take my, my, my uh, safety pins out. So you're gonna do all your quilting and everything as you find necessary, and then you're going to trim your quilt up. Now you would do this only once you finish quilting and you're completely happy with it. I would then trim this up. Now I'm very lucky, I've got a massive studio, so I've got a huge area that I can put this all on. So I always get the longest ruler you can possibly fit into your, into your studio. It just makes your life that little bit easier 
having the largest ruler you can. So there is your finished quilt. I know, it's miniature. Can you imagine that's your finished quilt? So now you're going to do your binding. Now, binding, I always find you've got to overlap it at some point. So I always try and overdo my overlap at the bottom. So what you're going to do now is I'm going to go, my binding is going to go all the way down here and then around there and around there and around there. Hopefully this won't take too long to show you, but let me show you where you are. You're going to be sewing a full quarter inch at this point. I'm hoping I've got enough binding to go all the way around this. Didn't really measure this out beforehand. Probably don't, but there we go. Now I always, always, always use my quarter inch placement here. I just realized I didn't do that there. But the very first stitch I do on my binding, I always do a locking stitch. The reason being, especially when you're gonna be manipulating this to join it, I want to make sure that it's tied down and I'm not gonna pull those threads out. I then make sure I get, so I am now as close to a quarter of an inch to the edge of my corner as I can be. I rotate my root, my point so that I've got that 40, my, my needle is now down there and I'm gonna stitch off to try and come through that corner over here. Hopefully I've, I've got that and I have. So you can see over here, what I've done is I've stitched to the quarter inch and then I've stitched all the way down, coming down here. I think you can just see that there. Perfect. So what I'm doing now is I'm folding this back here so that I'm following the line over there. And then I'm folding this back so that that fold lines up with this piece of the fabric there. And now I'm going to stitch from off the fabric right the way along. And I'm going to do that for all four of my corners. Until I get to the very edge and exactly the same thing. Whoops, I've gone a little far. There we go. Put my needle down. So I've done exactly the same thing again folding that back so that this line follows along. Whoops, there we go. So this line follows along all that way. Hold that down, and you do that. Have I got three more minutes for this? Oh, brilliant, then I can show you. Now don't forget, we've got some fabulous extra wide backings on the website at the moment. I think the Crossroads one has definitely been a really, really good um, color match. Uh, we used for the blue and the brights combination. That red and the blue really, really were good. Okay, and now I'm doing my second last corner. And then comes the tricky bit, is joining these two together. So I don't have a huge amount of room with this. Don't normally make t uh, mug rug size quilts. So I, oh, and that's moved. So I'm going to stitch about a half an inch on here, only because, right, so I'm gonna stitch half an inch and then I'm doing a locking stitch again. And you'll see why in a few seconds. Right. So I now need to join these two together. So I do my locking stitch there and there because I've got to do quite a lot of fabric manipulation here. So this piece I'm going to leave as my long bit. And I'm going to measure two and a half inches over here. Now there are two ways you can do this. I have a two and a half inch ruler that I lend I'm lucky enough to be able to put there and then I trim off. Or what I do over here is I mark my fabric at that two and a half inch piece. So I just triple check the measurement over there. That's two and a half inches. And I mark it with that press there. And then what I do is I fold this back. 
and I fold this back until I get to that two and a half inch line. And then again, I double check that I've got the right measurement. So you can see my fabric is now lined up with that pressed line that I've cut over there. And then I trim this off. This is the point normally where I cut it too big or too short and I have to rebound the whole quilt. Where I burst into tears and swear never to quilt ever again. Don't worry, that's completely normal. Now, I don't use pins. I hate pins. Use a pin, and I'll tell you why once I find one. There we go. And it's really important that you do this because the number of times I have sewn this and I've done it completely wrong and I've had to unpick the blasted thing and of course then everything's on the bias and then I'm crying and then I'm doing it with gin and tonics coming out of everywhere. What you're looking to do is to check once you've got the pin in that you're actually going to sew on the right way to be able to do this. Now what does that mean? Now normally you would not be doing something so tiny so we're just going to pretend I'm doing this as neatly as possible. Brilliant. Now I move my foot, my needle to the quarter inch. I don't know if this is going to work. No, I've done this wrong. Sorry, I'm getting flustered now. Right. And of course, because I've used a locking stitch, this is going to be a lot more difficult, but I'm pulling this out because it's not enough room. And normally you want to leave about 10 to 12 inches worth of space for you to do this comfortably. But I'm not going to mess this up. Live on air, where everybody will be going to say, that's why Sylvia does all your binding for you. Right. Put my pin in. Check that that's right, and it's not. This is why we check. So I'm just hearing our Block of the Week bundles are not on the web at the moment, so you might need to do a little search for a code. So if having watched this and you're very interested to do it, we will give you the code in a minute or two. I'm so glad you can all bear with us during these times. We're on obviously all social distancing and our web team is working so hard building our new website, etc. Things do sometimes go a little bit of awry. We're all just so grateful that you can bear with us during these times. Please have worked, please have worked, please have worked. Oh, blast. I've got a pleat. Oh, well, you're going to forgive me for a pleat, aren't you? So there we go. What you've got left over is the bits that you don't need cut off. Now, my top tip, check what you're cutting off five or six times before you cut it off, because I've cut through this join two or three times before. So then what you do, you won't have a pleat. Yours will be perfect. And you just go back to this section here and you just stitch all the way down. I'm annoyed I've got that pleat now. We're going to pretend that this looks perfect because you won't be doing your binding so quickly on live telly. So at that point you've got your binding stitched down. This is where your wonder clips, and you've heard me go on about these wonder clips on how much I absolutely adore them. What you do next is you fold your binding. If you're doing a single binding, I'll do the single binding first. You then take these fabulous wonder clips and you can then hold the whole process into place. I put them every two inches, inch and a half, two inches. Sylvia doesn't like them closer than that. She gets very cross when I refer to her binding on air, bless her. But she does so much of it. I love it. And she's so good at it as well. I kept saying, I could hire your services out, shall we do that? And she's like, shh, shh. Now that's a single binding because you don't have any double folds. If you're doing a double fold, 
what you do is you fold your binding into the middle there, then you roll that over, and that's your double binding. Then you pop that on here, and you just follow that all the way down. Now the double binding, I put the Wonder Clips closer together, just because I think it holds it a lot more neatly. And then when you get to the edge, you've got to do a little bit of finagling. I love that word. Somebody actually used that word with me the other day. I was doing a retreat and they'd heard me say it on air and they're like, excuse me while I finagle my work now. So you get your double fold there. You plop that on there and you just keep going round. And then what you can do is you hand stitch all of those along. So in my studio, that would be a case of, Sylvia, fix it and she would do it. Otherwise, if you want to machine sew it down, you literally just put it under your machine, going from the front in the stitch line between where your binding joins your fabric, and then you can stitch it all the way down there, because a lot of people do have problems with their hands. So that's my very, very short, very, very quick binding tutorial on how to do that. So let's just recap what we have got for you today. So the first thing we've got is our sashing and border bundles. Now, you've all seen me cut up the vintage one. So we're just going to imagine what that looked like because I showed that to you at the beginning of the hour. So we've got the sashing and border uh, panel for the vintage. And then we've got the wonderful set of instructions available for that as well. Just move all of these out of the way. Oh, I'm going to disconnect my iron. Hang on 30 seconds, because I did this the last time, nearly set fire to the set. Never a good plan. So that's our vintage bundle that we're getting there, and the instructions available as well. That's $24.99 today, and remember, you're getting so much more fabric than you have in the previous weeks. So that is the vintage colorway there. Next, we've got our blues colorway, I think this is. We're going to pretend this is the blues colourway because that's the same blue in the blue and the brights colourway. So this is the blue colourway. You're getting this fabulous huge panel there as well as a set of instructions. And then last but certainly not least, you're going to get a set of instructions and the brights colourway. And that's enough then to do your sashings and your borders on that. If you haven't got a bundle yet and you are keen to take part in this quilt, we've also got bundles of numbers 1 to 12 available in all three colourways. We're going to start with, we can do vintage first. Perfect. So we're going to do the vintage one. So if you wanted to get blocks 1 to 12 in the bundle, that's absolutely great. Don't forget, you're going to need to get your sashings and borders panels separately. Now available at the moment, I've always got to get this right. So... That's the code you're going to type in right there. IWXC57 is the code you're going to type in. It does pop up when you type in. The web's just having a bit of a moment this morning, so bear with us. Within an hour, it'll be back up again. So that's blocks 1 to 12 in the vintage. And if you want to get blocks in the blue, which is our lovely colourway over here, um, that then is also available on the web. But again, you're going to have to search. It's this code that I've got right here, which is X for X-ray, S for Sierra, X for X-ray, C for Charlie, 9, 8. That'll be blocks 1 to 12. And don't forget, you're going to need to get your borders and sashing panel as well as that. And then last but not least, we've got our lovely Bright's colour combination over here. That one is available also blocks 1 to 12. The code that you're looking for is just there. H for Hotel, I for Indigo, X for X-ray, C for Charlie, 4, 6. And again, you'll need to get the sashings and border bundle with that. Thank you so much for bearing with me. We've run a little bit over this hour. We've got Jane Greenoff back for another hour. <laughs> I'm very excited. I can't wait to see what she's got next. We're going to do the set now. See you in a few minutes. See you on the show. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket.
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harbour. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say don't get disheartened, take your um, learning journey slowly, don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt, build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it and when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
I'm having the best Friday. I've got another hour with the lovely um, Jane. I'm back. Oh, it's I'm back. so <laughs> wonderful to have her here. But, but, I'm going to just tell you, her fourth edition, it's gone, sold out. We've got no more left. But, don't worry, we've got another book. What you got? What you got? Right, we've got the Cross Stitchers Bible, which I'll put the right way up so that poor Joe can see what he's doing. Wasn't well, it brilliant? So this is, uh, this is the new Cross Stitchers Bible. Um, I say that because the first one was published in 2000 and uh, very quickly went out of print and the publishers got me to do it again. And this is the new one. Um, the book has gone into 10 languages. I am wow. Jane Greenoffova. International. In Russian. Oh, wow. William is Bilovi. In Russian. And the Chinese one, of course, you start at the yeah, back. I don't even, uh, yep. <laughs> really strange. <laughs> but there's an app now where you can actually take a, a photograph of it in the language and it will tell you what it says and it automatically Ooh. translates. And what, you wouldn't want someone to do that to one of your tattoos, would you? You never know what you might have got <laughs> by mistake. Actually, I really would. I think that's quite fun. <laughs> anyway, so Cross Stitcher's Bible. This this book was was sort of how the, the, the fourth edition Stitch book started. I was very nervous when the publisher asked me to call it the Cross Stitcher's Bible because it's got to be authoritative somehow. Anyway, so so we did the book. Basically, I'm going to just have a look. They are all signed. This one isn't. Would you like a pen? I will get a pen. <laughs> so what I'm just going to explain is that it, this is the book. If you've never done counted embroidery, you will find it invaluable because it will explain to you what is a chart, all the varieties of charts that you might be faced with, the sort of equipment you might want to use, how you might organise your threads. This is just one way of organising them. You'll remember if you were on, when I was on earlier, we, we organise our threads that way on the cards. This little picture here is really quite important because this is a classic picture showing you that if you work on Ada or Linen, as long as the count of the fabric's right, the two designs look the same. So it doesn't make Ada's stitching look babyish. You can right. see that's the same chart. So this is a 14 count Ada and a 28 count linen. So and it all of that's explained in, there in as well. all in the text. Because you are talking a different language as a quilter. I have no idea what that means. You're quite, Brilliant. quite. I do appreciate that. So we've got. But that's what's great, is that you've got a book that is literally from the very beginning from the very to be beginning. able to teach you how to and do that yes, counting all the way through. It's got sections on, there's, there's the, the goose and the pig without cross, it's a back stitch. there's what, how different it looks with and so on. But what gets more important is as you progress through the book, Ooh. you get black work, you get using beads, different oh, sorts of threads, hard anger. All the sorts of things. How how to buy the when you're looking for threads? You know, how do they come? What do they look like? And you know, if you're inexperienced and you go into a sophisticated stitching shop, one can often feel a bit cowed. Um, I can remember a lady coming up to me years and years ago at Liberty, and she she ferreted in her handbag, and I sort of wondered what was going to happen next. And she pulled out what had been a little kit from the front of a cross-stitch magazine, a free kit. Mm. And she said, have I done this correctly? And I said, yes, it's perfect. She said, right. And she was off. <laughs> but she would never have gone into a needlework shop no. and tried it. No. So, but this is to show you how some of them appear. You know, some of them are on bobbins, some of them are in skeins. So it covers all sorts of things. And then if we just progress, you can see, you know, how many pages uh, are in. We've got hemming. And then we've got... Oh, my goodness. So then all, all the charts for all the projects Gosh, are in the book. that's beautiful. Um, the wonderful Ethan Danielson, you all know, I've mentioned him before, he does our graphics for us oh. here and in the Cross Stitch Guild. And these stitch diagrams, you can actually see how to make the stitches. So there's a lovely big stitch library, plus all the charts in the back. There are lots of things for you to physically stitch. And it's a work of reference you can come back to 
uh, over and over again. What a beautiful book. So it's, uh, yes, I was very pleased. It was, it was it very exciting amazing. to get it into foreign languages, I must admit. That was my first experience of that. But it's great because you expand that, that knowledge into different, into different, different areas. countries, which I love. So that's the Cross Stitchers Bible, oh, and they are all signed. I will make now, sure this one is before you, I leave. You will, don't worry. We'll check that out. Don't you worry. <laughs> But now we've actually got a lovely slide for you now from a lady called Christine. Oh. Is it Christine or Christina? Oh, hello, we've Christina. We've had a lovely message in saying, Morning, I love you two together. Here's a sampler I made for my parents' golden wedding. Well done. Their children's initial, the first initial of each of their grandchildren, represented by trees for grandsons and flowers for granddaughters. Oh, my goodness, how beautiful is that? Well Would not be done. possible if I'd not um, had Jane's inspiration from her books. Well, that's Thank you, Jane. Happy sewing, Christina. Thank Christina, you, Christina. that is so beautiful. I'm sure that they, their eyes watered. I know when I've been given things that have been stitched by someone, I mean, anybody can buy anything. You can buy something to hand it over, can't you? To spend hours of your time stitching mm. and then to give it to somebody. My daughter really surprised me. Lulu had never been involved in stitching. She had been a whoopsie-daisy baby. Right. While the business <laughs> was in full flood. I had four days off to have her and then was back at work. So it was a bit shambolic. Jane, that doesn't surprise me. A bit, a bit, a bit shambolic. <laughs> and poor Lulu. Anyway, she suddenly decided out of the blue that she wanted a cross stitch and she wanted to do that one, Mummy, and pointed to something quite complex. And I basically said, I'll tell you what, sweetheart, you stitch one of these butterflies if you can stitch a butterfly, you can do anything you want. So sure enough, next morning, she appeared with the stitch butterfly, perfectly done. Must be in the jeans. And she actually worked something for me for Christmas. You know you have sayings with your kids and, and you don't even know you're doing it. This was stitched, it just said, can I make a small observation? <laughs> It was stitched in Old English. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. Because that's what they used to say is that she went out with too much makeup, too short, too low, too high, too high or whatever. The, I'll make a small wonderful. observation. So she stitched this for me. But, it, you know, it's on my wall at home. You know, someone oh, spent lovely. time Do you know, I have a, a, an expression as well. It's no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> Which is very true. Well, absolutely. Now, Jane, we've next got your needles. So I see you've got two boxes there. We yes, had the now, beginners one this, at the beginning. That's right. So this was that this is the what we call the Pooh Perfect collection. Now we had a perfect collection and the reason we changed it was we added <coughs> that needle. So that's the curved one. I don't know which is the best way to show it. We'll pop you that right way. there, right there, there. that's perfect. perfect. Can you see that now? Yep. So so we changed this collection and it is I think now a, a perfect combination because you've got a beading needle You've got a sharp needle. Now remember, cross stitchers use blunt needles as a rule because you're parting threads rather than um, piercing the fabric. Um, so there's a sharp for when you're making things up and when you're adding um, felt to, to inside a box or whatever. The curved one is for box and bookmaking. It's easier to do that with a curved needle. And then you've got an array here of needles for cross stitch and for hardanger. So this is our Plu Perfect collection. And to recap, this is um, an introductory one, if you like. It's our essential cross stitch collection where you've got 24s and 26s. The higher the number, the smaller the needle, just to confuse everybody. Of course. So a 28 is a very fine needle and probably you would use that for just backstitching with one strand. So you wouldn't shove six in a 28 or you'll break the eye. Um, so that's the needles. As I said, they're, they're gold plated to two microns each. And if you manage to strip the gold off them and you can prove you came from us, we'll replace them. <laughs> what can I ask, can I tell you? They're, they, we know they're good. We know they're good. Oh, that's so brilliant. there you are. What are we doing next, sir? So those are all your needles. So what are we going to do next? Where's my chicken picture? Strawberry sampler book kit. Ah, here we go. Oh my gosh, I love these little books so of this yours. Is, yes, now we have had a call from someone to ask me to show you some of the, the elements of a folded hem, which I am going to try and squeeze Perfect. in uh, if we've got a bit longer later. Oh, we'll have a longer, don't um, worry. And I'll sh at least show you some of the tricks of the trade. Anyway, so the folded hem is this thing. Round oh, the edge right. of, the of the book. But that gives such a beautiful detailing oh, to the outside finish, of the book. it's isn't it? Uh, I mean, in the old days, ladies' trousseaus would be of surrounded course. like that, wouldn't they? So this is about strawberries. Um, and you've got the, the, the book itself. You've got the cover. 
and then this index goes in later we've got an alphabet uh, with a few different stitches here little cottage here uh, another alphabet and home sweet home this is pattern darning now we had pattern darning this morning when we looked at the flower book I don't know if you darn socks but I don't. I can safely say no. And I know that darning these days is, a, is frankly a rarity, but if you remember in the olden days, you know, f f textiles were expensive and valuable and had to be mended. And children in orphanages and in girls' schools and things were taught to do darning mm. like patterns. So this is pattern darning. This is a little bit of hardanger. Now, hardanger is a technique that comes from Norway, the hardanger area of Norway, um, and it is to emulate lace, and it's used in the national costume. We'll mention my little hardanger book in a minute because that's something that we'll was do a, that next. We'll do that next, apparently. We'll do that next. <laughs> so that's some hardanger there. This is just pulled thread. Now, th this causes quite a lot of confusion. I think we've got pulled, drawn, and cut work. So um, cut work would be classed as hardanger. This pulled work is you're making patterns on the fabric just by pulling very tight. So no threads are removed or cut. You've got, and it, we use linen for this, specifically linen, because like anyone who wears it all the time, like me, you're always crumpled. Linen creases and you want the linen to crease. If you were doing this stitch on an easy care fabric or something with a lot of polyester in it, so marvellously washable, you wouldn't get the pattern to stay because it won't crease. So we use linen for pull thread. And this is drawn work. So this is hem stitch. These are hem stitch squares. And then this is a little hem stitch band. And then this is actually coloured black work. Again, we mentioned that this morning when I was talking earlier. So this is another one of these little lessons. The idea being that you learn as you progress through the little book. Um, again, it is a considered purchase, but they are such a joy to stitch. Um, obviously, <coughs> the cover um, you work first is pure cross stitch. So hopefully, you know, you won't be too scared to have a go at it. That's beautiful. It is a lovely thing. That it is really a very is. pretty thing. And again, thing. each of your kits say it, they'd all come with the threads all separated. Pre-sorted threads. The charts all done um, as usual. Yes, I think I might. Can I dig in your By cupboard? Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. I could just see the elephant spit again, sorry. <laughs> if I can get in, I will just show you what's in here really quickly. So you can see. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. look at that. I won't use your beautiful scissors. Now, so there we are. So again, we've got pre-sorted oh, threads. Colours look, are beautiful. They are nice, aren't they? Look at that. So beautiful look at that. and rich. Strawberries and cream. And it really is. So there's your threads. You've got the beads. You've got the, the perle thread, which is used for the hardanger embroidery. The beads, the buttons, the ribbon, lining fabric. So the linings are used when, if I just show you quickly on here, Wait a minute, let me get this the right way around. There we are. Oh, you, you wow. You need a lining inside where you're cutting or making oh, gosh, a hem. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's tucked into the page. There's your lining. You your really cover. have thought of absolutely everything with these. Well, we do try. Again, this was done originally to Cross Stitch Guild members, and, and they, they got it a chunk at a time over oh, a number right. of months, you see, as a lesson. So you've what got we were doing, what we do as a quilt as, quilt as you go, a block of the week type block thing. Week, exactly, block of the same month. principle as that. You've For me, your... it will be a block of the decade. <laughs> <laughs> the... And again, the pages are going to be done in the same way, in that you're going to stitch the project there. That will get folded like so. That would be hemmed. Oh, and then beautiful. when it's joined together, you have the same situation as we did before, where you you actually can't see the back of the stitching. That's beautiful. And then you would use your curved needle to put those all and together. And then you, obviously you could use a curved needle to put them together. <coughs> and you can see here, this is our wonderful Ethan. I mean, the other thing Ethan does when he's not designing and um, creating our charts and things, he redraws Grey's Anatomy. He's done it three times. So you can oh imagine drawing a pancreas in that sort of detail. Oh my God. 
gosh. Mind bit. Anyway, yes, he, he's quite clever, this chap. Wow. Bless him, how I managed to persuade him to do stitches <laughs> for us, I don't Jane, know. Jane, I think you're quite formidable. I think you could persuade <laughs> anybody to do anything. Just as an observation. Thank you for that. <laughs> so you can see how clear the charts are. They're beautiful. And they're lovely to work. Anyway, as I said... And then the other side of that bundle is the... If you flop that round, you've got the instructions that refer back to each and every one. Yes. So I think it's just always good that people can see exactly what it is that you're getting and how that ties so into the charts. So there's your cover and there's how your pages because work. Because you literally have covered every aspect well, of making so. this. Well, if we don't, you get phone calls. So actually, it's quicker to get it right first time Perfect. if you can. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, we're going to next do your little hard hanger book. Yes, let me we'll do that. just put that together if in one piece. If you pop it directly underneath you, you'll see there's a trusty little thing. shelf. It makes your life a little easier. Perfect. And then your little hard hanger book. There you go. Now, this was published, you could rotate I don't that. say, two months there we ago. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just checking. And it's signed. <laughs> I knew they were all signed because I remember doing it. This, this is ring bound to, because it's very much a book I'm hoping you'll work at in your hand. Um, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Hardanger, because of the nature of the, the embroidery, it's a bit nerve wracking because you're going to cut fabric and people get very nervous. And so what we've done is this is the diagram of the first stitch and this is the first stitch. Oh, that's clever. And then this is the diagram for the second stitch, and this is the second stitch. And this goes on through this little motif. And I'm showing you how to finish off on the back. Oh, how brilliant. And where and how to cut. Now, Jane, I know I could even do that because you've written that so beautifully. I know well, I hopefully could do that. that's... And we know these photographs were taken with, you know, with great care. Now, when you've worked this little piece... We turn it into that little scissor oh keeper. Oh my goodness, look how tiny that is. You see? So that's your test piece. So when you've done that, you've learnt how to do hard anger, and you're perfectly capable then of doing all these other things. We've got some history of the, about the place. And you've got some more charts and designs on that as well. Charts. It's brilliant. And for nine ninety nine, you can't go wrong with that. So there you are. That's the little hard anger book. <coughs> that's Signed brilliant. Signed by herself on the kitchen table. <laughs> Was that kitchen table or was that upstairs? No, the, the kitchen this, table. That time it was the kitchen table. Can I talk about the chickens next, please? Of course, uh, what a absolutely. You can see the chickens there with John, and you might wonder why the silly woman did chickens. Well, it's because of these, really. <coughs> oh, it wow. all started off. Are those from Portugal? Because uh, you know Portugal do those, um, they do all those different chicken I didn't emblems. know. I didn't oh, know. Oh, right. I wasn't being funny. I literally, I got it. Every time somebody goes to Portugal, <laughs> they bring out a giant uh, chicken back with them. So these chickens started off by my daughter buying me the one at the back as a present. And now I collect chickens. So I have a number of chickens like this. And then my husband and I went off to uh, Key West. And I came out of my little bed and breakfast place and there was a cockerel on the path. And I went, morning. He was showing me his best side, very much so. I just thought he'd got out from somewhere. But actually, the cockerels run wild all over Key West. Oh, wow. Because they were imported for cockfighting way back. And when the cockfighting was outlawed, the chick chickens and cockerels were let out. Assumption being they would die. They didn't, they thrived. And it's a criminal offence to run one over now. Gosh. In Key West, in Florida. So he started <coughs> because of this one. You can imagine the little flowery job of had course. to be done. And the dear old Rhode Island Red was as a direct result of my trip to Key West. How fabulous. So you can work them on linen or ada. So this one I've opened now. This yes. one is the linen one. Okay. So we've got the wonderful linen on here as usual. Yes. You've even got your own little needle. Yes. And then again, you've got these wonderful threads already pre-sorted for you. Two different colours, two there different colour cards. So you're ready for to you. stitch again. And again, as I said before, you can work these on linen or ada, whichever you prefer. Um, you can see how they look. This one's worked on the Ada fabric. This one's worked on the linen. And there's not that much difference between no, the two when you look at them. No, there wouldn't be any size difference. So this is the linen that I've got here, and you can you can barely is, tell yes. the difference on the two. No. 
So if you want to do them on linen or Ada, that's really your choice. Um, there, there's nothing on there. Sometimes there are projects where you can't really um, use the Ada <coughs> fabric because the, some of the stitches require more holes. If you can imagine the Ada is a, is a block, it's a square, and you use the four corners of the square. Yes. It's quite difficult to know where to put anything in the middle. So we tend to use linen for those projects. There's no reason why you can't do yes. these on Ada on if you Ada prefer well. to. And you can see what the charts look like. Look at this. So Isn't this is the one that I've got in my hand now, which is the linen one that's on your screen that I'm just showing you here. But if we just show you the Ada, if I could ask you to hold that one, if you could lean it maybe a little bit towards me. And aim to put it about here. <laughs> there we go. How are we doing? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Oh, my chair just disintegrated. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened, but there we go. Yes. Oh, I'm it, a lot shorter it, than I was. Sorry, I don't know how that happened. It's not really like camping, but you know what I mean. There so you can are. see that's the Ada in your hand there, but you can see with the linen, there's very little difference that's between right. the two. We, ch we chose the fabric ever so carefully. It's very well thought out. Aren't they fun? And each one of these have got the instructions on how to do it. You've Absolutely. got all the threads you need. You've even got the needle. Yes. You've got the fabric ready and you've go. got the charts ready to go. Sealed with beautiful elephant spit to get it done. Yes. <laughs> and um, we'll just I've opened show the linen you. one already. Oh, you're but doing the just, chart. Just looking at the chart, look. Aren't they fun? They are very good. Yeah, I was very well chuffed with that. I must just point this out as well now, because Andrea is a much nicer person than I ever was, your chart will come like that. And for those of you who really like to colour in as you go, oh, wow. you'll get a black and white one as well. Can you see that? that it's is very, very difficult good. to see in the light. But there's, you know this business, um, Cross stitchers, as a rule, prefer to work from a black and white chart. Oh, right. Because they can see the symbols. Because if you look at the coloured chart, which is beautiful to look at, when you get in amongst some of these browns, it will be difficult to tell which of was course. which. Whereas on here, you can tell <coughs> the symbols are different. So you get them both. And that is the one that we're doing at the moment. It's Isn't he fun? I think he's rather This smart. is called the Rhode Island Chicken. It comes in linen or in... Ada. This is the linen one. Uh, is that linen or Ada? Lin linen. linen. Yes, that's the linen one. <coughs> Isn't he fun? But the background is so, so similar between the linen and the Ada. Um, and then the Ada, you can actually just see, this is the Ada that I'm holding in the plastic bag. You'll be able to see there's very little difference between the linen and the Ada. Putting them together, you can see there. But you have got the choice of each of those. Then the flowery chicken you've got over there. Yes. I... Again, this So that one is in Ada. Yes. <clears throat> and then so equally you've got the... There's the Ada version, look. That's the Ada version that we've got in the frame already. And then the linen one is just this one here. That's the Rhode Island done. Oh, sorry. Don't worry, we've got so many chickens. It must be a bit like Florida. Let me yank this fabric So out. I haven't touched that one if you take oh, that thank one. thank you. Oh, that's Ada. You're looking for linen. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> we'll give up on it. You can have either in both, all right? <clears throat> and there's your fabric done in the square. There it is. Thank you. Lovely. And there's a linen version of the same. And again, the threads are pre-sorted. You've got the emergency free phone number on the back of the chart, should the cat run off with your threads. Um, and you've got um, the needle and the thread. And this is that beautiful flowery chicken you're doing there. It's Absolutely fun. stunning. So I've now got chickens in the garden as well. Not real chickens, but, <laughs> but different sorts of chickens. So yes, my collection of chickens is getting larger. That's wonderful. There we go. Now, where are we going next? Are we going to do your demo boys? next? Oh, I could try, couldn't I? Oh, the, access the trio accessory kit. Right, I'll grab this. The shaker. First. Disappear behind the table. Right, the Shaker Trio. Now this, this is These three. are such great value. Look at the price of that. All three of those, $14.99 for the full kit of that. And, you and get, you're getting a pair of scissors. And actually these are fiendish. They look like little tiny toy scissors, and actually they're not. If I just put that pin on. <coughs> oh, these are pinned in actually, sorry. There we go, look. There are little Chatelaine scissors, and they look like toys, and they're fiendish. They're very sharp, they're not for children. Um, they're absolutely brilliant. Italian, actually. Brilliant. 
And again, you've got those wonderful charts available to you and a full um, plan of how to actually make it from beginning to end. You've got the scissors in there, you've got the needles in there. You've got two little buttons as well. Yes. The button, oh, the buttons for the centre. Oh, little that's pin beautiful. Cushion. A little what bow for you to keep on the end of your scissors <coughs> and a little chatelaine shape again to keep your scissors embroidery. safe. That's I've beautiful. I've got this upside down again. There we are. Is that better? No, we don't have very many of these kits available. So if you are interested in one, don't forget it's our one day PNP. If you check out multiple times through the day, it's not going to cost you any more or any less. We just don't want you to miss out. There we are. So this is a piece of linen for in a second when you're ready. That's right. Do, can we swap something for the first hour that we didn't get to? Yes. What would you like? The which one? Any minute now. The um, the little rose. Yes. That one. Took them off yourself. So I do not want it? to. I don't want to get that incorrectly. But I have to say, Jane, you've got such great value on these kits. There we are. This is the rose bisque oh, that's one. Oh, beautiful. If I sit it there... Forgive me, I couldn't pronounce it, so, and I've forgotten how you said it's it. It's a bisconu. 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 Uh, I didn't invent this. I wish I had. Um, bisconu apparently is French and refers to quirky or irregular. Oh, right. And what's clever about these is this is just two squares. I love the way you minimise it to be that. That is so beautifully done. But look at that you price see. point. Only eight ninety nine for this. Is this beginner friendly? Yes. So that's a good one yes, to start. Yes, if you've never ever <coughs> stitched before, you can get this on the Ada. Or you can get it on linen. If you've never stitched on linen, this is perfect. So it's a nice one to start with, Absolutely. with either. And at that price point as well, it's a good yes. thing to be able to get both Absolutely. and see which you prefer. They're symmetrical. Um, they're easy to stitch. Uh, there's no back stitch at all. It's, it's I can do that then. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, some people loathe back stitch and they save it all till the end and then they never finish the no. project because they no. can't bear it. And they've got little shell buttons back and front. Uh, I like my Biscornu well stuffed. So you can put the button in the middle. Some people prefer not to do, use the button. Sometimes I use button thread to do that to make it really nice tight. And taut. Yes, exactly. That's the Biscornu. Beautiful. And again, you get the um, buttons. Uh, you don't get the stuffing in this one. I just use some K-Pok or some polyester wadding. Perfect. Um, if you want to make it, a couple of the things we've done in the past, I filled with um, dry rice. Oh, right. Uh, to make a weight. Well, the other thing I heard was uh, crushed walnuts. So if you're going to be putting pins Good and happens. needles in, because crushed walnuts apparently keep your, um, they not only sharpen your needles and, and pins, happens. but it also puts a fine oil on it to prevent rust. Well, I didn't know that. Nor did I. Well, but somebody told me that about a year ago, and I've still never done anything about it. Because I know that you can get, um, what's the funny fine sand? I can never remember the name of. It'll come back to me in a minute. Next. Beach sand. No, not beach sand, <laughs> Retty boy. Oh, I can't think what it's called. There's a very fine black sand that goes sand into ancient... No. I'll stop now. Stop it. Stop. I love Jane. Love stop. Jane. Behave. What are we doing next? I am just going to show something. OK. In case I don't get the time to do it. Now, one of the questions I was asked for was about a folded hem. Now, I'm just going to show you something really quickly. Now... The first thing I would say, I've got a piece of fabric in front of me and a gold needle here, is to start a folded hem, to get this effect here, you would remove a fabric thread. So I'm just going to remove one. So I'm just going to take a thread <gasps> from the fabric. As a quilt to my heart just stopped. You'd ruin my design of the fabric, but with linen that works perfectly. Now, it hasn't come out very well actually, but it's it'll do to make <coughs> a point. Let me just grab the rest of it from there. This to give you an idea, it there is on on the Cross Stitch Guild website there is a video, which sadly is the one you have to pay for, which is 20 minutes long, which shows you a complete folded hem. So if you were doing one of these, it's not wildly expensive, um, and you wanted to sit and watch me for 20 minutes doing it 30 times, you could. But if you try and imagine, my embroidery is here, and I'm going to make this ladder round four sides to get that effect. All right? And to save time, I'm doing it here. 
Now what I'm going to do next is count nine, nine and seven. Nine, nine and seven. And I'm going to find my glasses. <laughs> because the vanity of the woman. <laughs> so I'm going to count nine. All right, so let me just do that. One. Do you know what I love is you do three, exactly what I do. Four, five, six. So there's nine threads. I was too scared to talk to her there. Now, I'm going to score the fabric. Now, this is just worth knowing. <coughs> you pull the fabric, not the needle. Oh, that's clever. Now, if you just see that again, right? Now, if your table's rosewood veneer, don't do it on it. Uh, do yes, it on I'm, a glossy magazine or something. My, my dining table is ro was, ro well, was rosewood was veneer. <laughs> now, what that does is it actually follows the thread line, and I'll show you what I mean. That will now make a permanent crease. Oh, brilliant. Ready for your hem. You can see the ladder, yes? And you're using one of your gold needles I'm on I'm using that. a gold needle. Um, now, nine, nine and seven, there is a reason. So this is, this is worth just watching this, because if you can do this scoring, when you want to get a straight edge on a piece of fabric, it's, it's the way forward. So when you were scoring, you're going against the warp or the weft there, which would make it very easy to keep a straight line, you're isn't in, it? Yes, you're in the, you're in the, the hole yes. and you're pulling the fabric, not the needle. So that'll keep it, whichever keep way you're doing goes, the fabric, yes. it'll be the warp or the weft. Yes. Keep, uh, perfect. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's nine. Do it again. <coughs> so pull the fabric, not the needle. I don't know whether that was nine actually, but obviously one would take We're care. We're going to pretend that it is. And, and then we'll ask Joe not to zoom in too closely <laughs> in case it's not. I obviously don't have a needle in my mouth. <laughs> not at all. Totally, totally the way to do it. We're looking away. <laughs> so that's nine and nine. <coughs> and then you count seven. and remove one. This time I'll give it half a chance. Whoops, stay. So that's how you make your hem. I'll borrow your super duper shears. They are really good. So you're cutting there in the piece that you've just taken in the, the thread yes, out. The seven. We just you don't in have the to, one. but it's easier to see. Of course. If you've pulled a thread. So what actually is going to happen now is. Well, the seven should nest beautifully into that nine that you had before there it. Are. So you explained that so well. Even I got it. So when you're doing your <coughs> hems, um, if you work this. You work round, what you would also do is you would pull a thread here, obviously, same yes. thing, all the way around, and on the corner where you get, where you get um, a little hole, that will be when you're, when you're trying to create the mitre that is here, you use the little hole in the corner. As your guide. As your guide. Now, the other thing I was asked for mm -hmm. um, was, um, one was how to attach beads. Mm -hmm. Well, I think <coughs> what I'm going to say to that, I'm not a beader. Uh, I attach beads when I'm doing cross stitch uh, and I use a sharp needle. Um, I have a piece of thread that matches the fabric, not the bead. And I use a half cross stitch and every fourth bead I finish off on the back so they don't fall out. And the other question was... Now, would you be using the beads in the strawberry sampler that you were using for that demo? Yes. You would, so you'd be you doing could, exactly you, the same, same thing. thing. Yes, exactly the same thing. Brilliant. And you had your on. fleur book earlier, your fleur bundle that yes. you had earlier. Can we have a look at that? Yeah, of course. I think it's in your little bundle because you've got this your... One? Yes, because you've got the beads on that one as well. That was such a beautiful kit. So if we just clear <coughs> the decks a little bit. So this is the fleur etui. I'm sure lots of you have come across the exploding boxes before. Um, this is only one of those, really, um, but it does have a slight wow Jane, factor. Jane, you cannot minimise something quite so beautiful. Well, I'm it's, sorry. it is sweet. It's so, absolutely adorable. So basically, the, the kit 
which we've got around here somewhere. I think it's on here your it little is. trolley over there. There you go. As you lifted the piece of paper. There we go. So basically you're going to stitch all these elements. If I disappear into here, I'm not sure where we've put the chart. It's probably loose. Bear with me a second. That is such a beautiful little box, that. Fish. And all those beautiful detailing on the... Um, mm -hmm. no, on that, I can't find it. What minute. do we call it? A Biscano? Which one, darling? The, Sorry. the middle yes, section. Yes, the little Biscano has got Biscone. some extra beads added. That's beautiful. Um, this is a little cut hem round the edge here. Um, again, one of the stitches that in the instructions tells you how to do that. Um, is the chart at the bottom there? I can see a folded piece at the bottom. Keep going. No, you're right. Oh, no. We've had it once today, we did. so it's lurking. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. What's that there? No. The no. iron might still be warm, be careful. <laughs> you and the iron. <laughs> right, what else would you like to talk about, my sweet? There we go. Let yes. me pop, pop that back up. Ooh. Can we recap your flower sampler book from the first hour? Because that's been so popular. Yes, absolutely. We've only got a quarter of the stock remaining on that one. Oh, crikey. Okay. That's fine. Because you would still do that hem in that, um, that kit, as, uh, that book as well, won't you? Yes, it might. I <clears> might <throat> need magic hands, Joe. I can hear it happening. The pitter patter of tiny little Joe's. Look in the feet. box and see if one could see the flower sample of work model. Don't drop it. Oh, good fellow. <laughs> Thank you, magic hands. <laughs> right. So, this is the flower book. Now, um, I think this was the second of these little books that we did, and they've been immensely popular. I think we're now on number six. Oh, wow. Thinking back, that was number three. We've done one on indigo with blues and denims uh, and one with hardanger in. So yes, we're, we're up to the next one now. So this was my first project using Madeira threads oh, right. after I moved to Madeira from others. Um, <clears throat> and my beautiful thread cupboard, Madeira threads are numbered in colour order, which sounds common sense, but it isn't always the case. When you look at a, a stand of the competitive threads, they are in number order, but not in colour order. Yes. Now, obviously, if you know your numbers, it's Ooh. quicker to find them that way. But if you want to design something, to go into my cupboard and have this row of greens and row of... Oh, it was beautiful. Lovely. We have less than 20 of these left. Well, heavens, I'd better just show you the rest then. So ignore that little bit for a minute. So you work your cover, which is that one piece. It's got some four-sided stitch down there, which is very simple to do. The only thing to remember with that is, if you've never done it before, there is a saying that cross-stitchers can't pull. All right? They can. They must. You have to pull that quite hard to make those little holes. Oh, less than 15 have, are available now. <laughs> right. While you've been showing it, we've <laughs> sold five. That's brilliant. So that's just a traditional alphabet. Could you rotate that 180 yes, degrees? Yes, of course I could. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That, it's funny, isn't it? Because the old studio was the other yes. way around. <laughs> right, so we've got this little... Just the, leave it with me. The perfect. There. Perfect. There. Perfect. Right, so this is pure cross-stitch alphabet. So nothing scary there. Ditto. Then we've got a little cottage with a few French knots on it. Now there's a few new stitches in here. And also I've used some space-dyed silk. So this is a Steph Francis space dyed 12 ply silk. So there are 12 threads to each strand. Sorry, 12 strands to each thread. Uh, and they change colour as you go. So everybody gets a slightly a different, different version. Black work in, in gold and black, obviously there. Um, this is a CC work. Now this is quite interesting because we visited a CC with a group last year or maybe the year before um, and and went and to the Assisi school and saw some of the examples of the table linens oh, you know full-size tablecloth with 12 napkins gosh can you imagine and they were magnificent and the principle is that the design is left empty and you work the background 
So it's slightly back to front. That is beautiful. And there's another example there where the background's stitched and the pattern's left empty. My great, my, hus my, my husband's great great grandmother. Right. She did exactly this, and the work that she's left is absolutely oh, beautiful. Amazing. And it's been passed down to us now by his granny, oh, well, which I'm very. Lucky. We are definitely, definitely treasuring them. So that's Hardanger, which we talked about. And of course, the little book I mentioned, my Hardanger book, um, you've got those instructions in the kit, obviously. Uh, I'll have a look in there in a second. So that's Hardanger, and there's a lining. Oh, we're down to single in. figures on these now. You might not have time to get to the Hardanger before they're all gone. Now, we talked about darning socks earlier, didn't yes. we? Yes. Right, the, this is pattern darning. That's now, I mean, I don't darn, have never darned, except to do patterns. Um, but my mother had a skirt, a Czech skirt from Aquascutium, that was very dense Czech, mm. and it was very costly, and it got a cigarette burn on it. Oh, no. Now, there was a firm locally who had four people in a family, and they did pattern darning. This is in the last 20 years. And I could not see the damage, really the damage from was. the front. You could on the back, but not on the back. Because the patterns <clears throat> we created in the darn. So these are... Darning patterns. Now, yesterday, I was in Whitney Antiques in Oxfordshire. I'm giving them a plug. Um, they have museum quality samplers. Mm -hmm. Five, 28,000 pounds. Yeah. Cheaper twice the price. Absolutely. Yes. And I go and dribble. <laughs> Actually, is what I go and do. I dribble and buy catalogues um, because, you know, they're not in my, my price range. Um, but there were three darning samplers in there. Oh exquisite a big bunch of flowers and each flower was darning patterns oh, tiny wow. tiny Beautiful. darning patterns. anyway yeah this is a hemstitch square now this is not something you would do as your first project because you would get a bit cross-eyed by the time you worked your way through the lessons you know you've got the hang of it that's a square and then this is a little hemstitch band so this is where we've removed threads and rewoven them into the edge so you can't see where they've gone gosh and again that's something you wouldn't set off to do on your first project no this is a little pull section so again i was saying before we always use linen for pulled embroidery because you want to create creases in the fabric and you want them to stay creased so this is the, the little book um i think it's a joy i was incredibly pleased with it i think i had an open one Indeed. handy just bear with me. <clears throat> I am a little concerned your little pin has popped out from where your scissors were tacked into your frame. Oh, yes, thank you. So I don't want you to lose your scissors by no, them coming no, out. No, I'll deal with that. In oh, a and there's another one. <laughs> yes, shedding. got it, got it. I'm shedding pins, folk. Well, everything is proving so popular today, which is why I love having Jane on. Oh, well, it's nice to be here again, I tell you. It's lovely. Woo -hoo. The Shaker Trio accessory kit has now sold out. Oh, I hope you enjoy that, whoever's bought it. I think it's lovely. And, of course, you get to use it with your stitching. Of course. You know, it becomes part of you, doesn't it? We all like having luscious things around us. All you need is a needle and a pair of scissors. Mm. But what's need got to do with anything? Of course. So you can see in here that we've got lining fabric, threads, fabrics, pages and pages of destructions, like we have with the strawberry book the the one tip i would give you when you open this is to sort it out put everything away except the front cover which is the colored the different colored one and sit and work the front cover find yourself a shoe box put it in the shoe box and then work a page at a time working through the charts if you if you've not done some of these stitches before and you look at the last page you'll think actually i can't do this yes which isn't true <clears throat> and i've seen smashing versions of this finish you know i know that it works because i designed it but there's nothing better than a stitcher coming up with a finished one that looks a bit like the one you made yes because you think Somehow it's not going to happen, you no. know, and it's wonderful to see them finished. I won't deny, I get the same thrill when I design a pattern for a quilt, and, and then I see it, and somebody the quilt. literally just rotates half the block one way, and you're like, oh, that's brilliant, and it's yes. just so nice, I understand yes, that completely. It's wonderful. So there we are. So that's what would you like fun. next? I'm going to do the carnation sampler. If we've carnation still got sampler. That Perfect. One. I'm going to open this. Oh, it's already open. Good. Right, this is very sweet. Um, if I talk about samplers really quickly, um, the thing about a sampler is that 
Originally, samplers weren't square. Samplers were long, thin pieces of fabric, and they would be bands of different designs aimed as a aid memoir. So you'd work a pattern you liked, and then you'd roll it up and put it in a drawer. And when you wanted a pattern, you'd unroll your samplers and find patterns you liked. So they were almost like stitching diaries. The square ones came much later. Um, and these would be done by ch often by children, um, often in orphanages or schools, and have become very, very collectible. Um, if you get um, posh catalogues like, I'm going to say, Laura Ashley, and other obvious posh shops, um, the stylist would very possibly have used one of her samplers in one of the pictures. In fact, often you can find it, the same sampler in three or four pictures because they are very distinctive. There's a house, a couple of trees, a little garland, a little wrought by, and the name of the child, sometimes the age of the child as well. So you can see they are, they're very attractive, uh, very frameable things. And this one was done originally as a little class to teach people to stitch on linen, uh, but it's also available in the age of material and is very pretty and very much of the, uh, of the, of the genre of the type. The trees are slightly unusual. Um, but there we are, that's the little carnation sampler. So we've got the instructions on how you do that. You've got the wonderful chart that goes with it, the details of all the knotting and the cross stitch. Is this a cross stitch guild? Yes, that's standard our printout. instructions, yes. That's brilliant, because that yes. gives you the basis of most of the stitching. Yes, Ethan did that for us. We, after, you know, after a lot of years, I'm not saying any of the things I do are the right way. They're the way I've done them, or learned to do them, or found useful. So that's my sort of stitching hints from starting from nowhere to, to producing something like this. Um, it's packed very full because it, it is. there's a lot of stuff to say. And then again, you've got this incredible chart. Isn't it pretty, though? Going all the way through. The just, it's just incredible. The lovely. And you've got the instructions all available there. But what I absolutely love about all of your kits, and it has brought me to a question which you may not like me asking, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Go on. Look at all the threads, all numbered beautifully at the top here, named, and all those gorgeous threads, and those then tie in there. Jane. How much threadage do you have? How many threads do you reckon you have? Me? Mm -hmm. Personally. Right. I know that's like asking somebody how big no, their fabric stash is. No, no. Well, it's slightly different because there's two questions here. Right. I have a cupboard in my studio that has... We, I get the Madeira threads on little bobbins. Right. Because they're industrial size. Oh, right. Gosh. Okay. So, as does Andrea. So, I have a palette of colours of 210. Right. And they're the ones that I use that are in the same palette as Andrea's got at the Cross Stitch Guild. Right, so you're both using the, off the so same hymn sheet. So, in other words, she moved my threads up there, and then I've got one bobbin of each colour, so that when I sit down tonight with a large glass of red wine and design a Georgian sampler, which is on my list to do. Right. I actually bought a Georgian picture frame yesterday so that it will be in keeping. Oh, perfect. Anyway, so I'm going to draw something to fit this little wooden frame. Um, I can go to the cupboard and I can help myself to any of these 210, knowing that when the kit goes into production... It'll be the same thread, same now, colours. Now, having said that, yes. I've got a sweetie jar, you know, the old-fashioned yes, sweetie yes. jars. That's got my silk in it. Mm-hmm. Just the silk. one sweetie jar. No silk. No, Pure silk. <laughs> Pure silk. One sweetie jar. <laughs> round down. Right? Then I've got a... You know the plastic boxes with the lid you get from Ikea or similar yes, yes, establishments? Yes. One of those is full of Oliver Twist uh, space dyed medium and fine cotton. Now, the reason I say medium and fine cotton, I don't know if I've got anything here to show you. I probably haven't. Uh, it's the same thickness as the perle thread used in the Hardanger book, so I can do the big blocks in what the medium cotton and the detail stitching in the fine, but in purple. So I've got that. Right. And then I've got the box of threads that I don't know whose they are. <laughs> where I've, 
well, I collect, you see. Of course. Um, we see, when we have fabric stashes, it's, I, had to be, I was thrown out of the house, basically, with my fabric stash because it got so large. So I have an image of you doing the same with all well, your threads being evicted out of a room. I have to tell you, just quickly, that what actually happened was when Andrea Thompson took over the Cross Stitch Guild and my baby went into the lorry, which was gruelling to say... So everything about the Crosstitch Girl went into the lorry and went to Manchester, near Manchester. And my big studio was empty. Well, dirty, actually, is what it was. Uh, I moved up to a cupboard. Now, there is a jotting, actually, on my own website, Jane Greenoff. There is a jotting because I had an almost catastrophe this week. Right. Because I'm in my tiny studio. It's smaller than this. Right. Um, on my lovely old wooden chair and turned awkwardly, there was a loud bang and the chair disintegrated. I mean, actually disintegrated and fell to the floor with herself. And the terrible... Bill was watching football, didn't even hear the screams or the bang. So I crawled about on the floor a bit. Jane! Seriously, I did go with such a clatter. Anyway, the chair... You should have said we'd have given you a chair. Oh, no, 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 no. The chair was actually Bill's grandfather's chair, oh, who wow. died in 1946. Right. Right, and he was a barber. Right. And it was his barber's chair is where he sat his gentleman. So he didn't owe us anything. So you'll see a picture of my current studio, because when it all went, I didn't consider that I didn't have a stash anymore. Because I'd had oh, everything. Of course, all in the end, right. I'm with and you. then I'd go to. Di I can't, I haven't got any buttons. I haven't got any pearls. I haven't got any needles. So I've had to get lots of it back. Fine. <laughs> was just a bit worried about that. <laughs> but, but one more thing I'm going to try and get in if Please, I can. Please, of course. This is a secret. Oh, we love a secret. This is the Catherine Archer sampler. This is a tiny extract from a sampler done by a child at the Bristol Orphanage. And I, we have stock. There's one. Well done, that man. Now, I've got to show you what it came from. You haven't seen this yet, have you? Oh, I'm going to lay it gosh. down because of the lights and yeah. let dear Jo find it. That is exquisite. Now, this was stitched by Catherine. Can you see that? You see yes. how tiny it is? Now, I'll just get it straight. There you are, look. OK, this little sampler was stitched by Catherine Archer sometime about 1865. Now, what we do know about her, there's her name at the bottom, and her classmates are on here. So she was at the Bristol Orphanage, the Muller Orphanage in Bristol. Um, she was born of labouring parents in Shockley. I think it's Yorkshire. I got this wrong last time. I think I said Northumberland. But anyway, Shockley up there, up north. Sorry, Bill. I should have remembered. Um, and her mother died of peripheral fever, which would have been very common, you know, six weeks with, after a birth. Women often didn't have the right care, and she died. And her father kept her till she was three. Now, he was a labourer on a farm in 1860 Plonk. Oh, gosh. And then she went from Shotley to Bristol. And if you, we don't know how. She got to the orphanage when she was seven. We know that because they kept records. Of course. And we wrote to the Muller Trust, and they very kindly sent us a copy of her registration details, hence knowing about her parents. And she went there when she was seven. And she went into service in Blackheath in London when she was 15. So she survived. Yeah, that, that's own was a miracle. Which, you know. So this sampler... For those of you, we've been talking about linens and things, haven't we? I said about 28 threads to the inch, which is what I like working on. I work on 32. I can see 36 and 40, but I, I can't stitch on it for long without my magnifier these days with my cataract coming. And what are you doing in the kit? This is what? This is 28 count. 28. It's 28 count or ADA. So you can work this extract of her work. You can work that on either of these fabrics. Some people have worked the whole thing like that. I mean, this is a tiny amount of that. But her work, Catherine, is 70 to the inch. Gosh, that's just showing Just shows. But it also and shows that as a young, young lady, you can see a lot more. You there. can see. And, and, but, you know, poor needles, poor nutrition. 
That is incredible. Isn't it fascinating? It really is. I do a lot of my family tree research, oh. and a lot of my family were in the workhouse at that point as well. Yes. So um, it's, it's fascinating, it's fascinating isn't it? fascinating to find. Yes. But it is, it's just you wish that you had that little gap of information. Of course. Just as one major thing happened, you don't quite know how it got And it's to funny, because this one, we do know about it. I've got a sample done in 1732, and uh, when we took it apart to reframe it and mount it and whatever, a photograph fell out of a pair of Victorian, very fierce people. You know how fierce and the lady looks as if you'd kill. Mm. And he stood there looking like... Um, and we that just, was friendly for that uh, dear or that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know why it was there. There's no information. It, it wasn't anything to do with the person who stitched it no. in 17 Plunk. So we, but having never, a photograph having from a that photograph era would have been extraordinarily would, would, expensive. It, would, but just imagine, this. so this Victorian picture has been... It wasn't put in there as packing. It was obviously put in there for a reason, but we don't know. I wish the person had said... It just put on the back. I do say to people, you know, when you do your stitching, if you can sign and date them, um, even if it's not visible to the fr in the frame, because then when someone does drop it and reframe it, they can go, good Lord, I'd no exactly. idea Auntie Flo made that for me. Exactly. You know, it's nice. And the great can. thing about the sampler is that you've got that really great skill of being able to do all the lettering and the numbering and yes. all the different stitches. Yes. It's a really lovely sampler and available again, seventeen ninety nine, And it's quite a good size as well. Yeah, if you notice how grubby it looks, it's actually been dunked in cold tea. Oh right! Oh right! This has been dunked in coffee. Well, I've heard tea and coffee are very good for dunking yes. things I mean, in to get different it, colouring. I did it. I did it after it was stitched as an experiment um, to age it. So that's, that's just to show it's not actually as old and tatty as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have we left anything out? Because well, we, we seem to have gone through so much. We've got, there, we've got this we? little pillow. Oh yes. Right. Let's do the little pillow. I'll do that next. Lovely. Sorry, I just saw that. I didn't know what was... Where are we? It's around... It might have been this morning's. Bear with me, everybody. I'll have a ferret in the cupboard over here. Yes, so this here is the sampler are. pin cushion. Yeah, there we are. Right, so, so I'll tell you about So if you can spin that around 180 degrees for me. Again. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, and so this... And if you put that a little bit more towards you... There we go. A little bit higher. Perfect. There. Let me tell you about this. So this is again a little sampler. Now this is all. This so you've started, made that in linen. Yes, this is made in linen. You can you can do it in the Ada. And again, oh, the, now I know that's missing because I've just found it somewhere. It's the same Ada as we showed you earlier, made in um, made of flax. So it still looks lovely and old. And I'll have a little look in a second. This, I I saw. Uh, a sampler pincushion in an antiques market, uh, which was absolutely exquisite, and it was £180, and I didn't have it. Gosh. And didn't buy it. <laughs> um, so then I thought, I'll do my own. So this is a little sampler pincushion. You can fill this with dry rice to make a little bit weight for your desk. Um, the back is stitched as well. Oh, that's beautiful. And this has got a few little stitches. Now, these little white stitches, they're slightly more... Um, complex on Ada fabric. Not difficult, but they are slightly difficult, more, more difficult um, because you haven't got the middle hole. You have to just jiggle it a bit, as, as dear old Ronnie Barker would have said. So there we go. Oh, look, he's choking over his water. That was being mean of me, wasn't it? Let me see if I can find the Ada for you. Jane, you're trying to kill me. <laughs> I think. Get a sneaky little glass of water and it nearly came out my nose with that <laughs> comment. I can't actually put my hands on the Ada I want at the Is moment. Is that it there? No. No. Anyway, so either or, this one can be used, uh, Ada or linen, whichever. Um, it's very sweet, it's very traditional. Um, I like it a lot. I've it's always very liked that one. pretty. Some some things you when you draw them um, and sit down and, and create them, they just happen really quickly. Some it's exactly. like pulling teeth. You know? But what I love about your kits, that's such a great price again for another one to just start with yes, and doing it something is nice. there. Ten ninety nine for that little sampler there. You've got the chart. You've got the full the yes. instructions. Yes. All the little threads these, are made for you, but you haven't numbered the threads because no, they're obviously much very yeah. much more noticeable as to what they are. Yes, these are not pre-sorted, but they're all very different. You're not going to get stuck sorting those out, and they're in two bundles very deliberately. 
and it'll tell you to sort bundle X and Y and so on. I think we must be nearly done, Enchanted my tile. Oh, yes. Is that it? There we go. You can tell how organised we've been today, can't you? I haven't been here for a while. I've lost the track. You're doing great. Oh, look at the little baby spider! There he is. Now, it's funny, actually, because I've got one customer who can't even look at it. Oh, really? Is it agoraphobic? Arachnophobic. Arachnophobic. Right, so this is not a first project. Um, it is cross-stitch on linen. It's only available on linen, not on the edge of fabric as well. And the reason for that is we've got the hem stitch square. Now, some of you will have remembered that from the uh, flower book. Uh, you've got queen stitch here, which is ever so pretty. Um, it's a very old stitch, uh, also called Rococo. Now, I first met this stitch at the Burrell Collection in Glasgow. Uh, my husband Isn't it was on incredible? Oh, yes. Absolutely gorgeous. The Burrell Collection, I think they're closed at the moment they for are. a massive refit. That's Pollock um, House, isn't it? Sorry? Pollock House, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. They, they've closed at the moment for a refit, but they have a very fine collection of 17th century band samplers. And it, for me, it was just heaven on earth. It is stunning in there. Absolutely stunning. And, and the thing is that they're on the wall and you can get Yes. There, you can get really close, and there's nobody sort of smacking your wrist. Um, and I saw these on a, on a bunch of strawberries, and I just thought they were so pretty. They're a pull stitch, and they're. A, I have heard ladies refer to it as bitch stitch, <laughs> uh, which I wouldn't encourage, obviously. <laughs> but I have heard that because if you do get them wrong, they're a pain to get out. Right. You have to cut them out and start again. Right. It really is impossible to unpick them. But they're very effective, but they do need pulling fairly tightly so you get the little dimples in the stitch. So that's very pretty. The hem stitch square, you're going to work round the edge there, and then you're going to withdraw threads and then finish the inside. Again, all the instructions and pictures are inside. Um, and then I think there's a little bit of satin stitch. There's a broken road stitch there and there. Other than that, it's straightforward and, and very pretty. And you do get this delicious little gold-plated charm. Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't it pretty? And the great thing is, is, as you say, it's not a first project, no, but it's a nice, no. reasonably priced project that you yes. can actually then aspire to doing once you've started well, something a little bit simpler. The other thing, to, you know, to bear in mind is there's nothing printed on the fabric. If you want the spider's web and the, you know, put a flower there. Exactly. You don't have to do what I no. did. You could just put initials. But it's beautiful. Could Jane, be. I can't thank you enough. It's been That's an been, absolute it's been delight. Lovely. It's been lovely I really, to be really back. Th thoroughly enjoyed having thank you. you. And I hope you come back really soon. It'll be super. You'll need thank to make you. a few more of those glass houses, though. <laughs> yes, Sold out you. far too quickly this morning. We're going to be back That's in a few fun. minutes with Make of the Week, and we've got some fabulous fabrics for you. See you in a minute. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did.
My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual. Always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Sally Stevens. I'm from Worcestershire, a little town called Upton upon Severn, which is a lovely little riverside town. And not far from there, I also have a little sewing studio, so I can work and leave all my mess left out um, when I'm preparing projects and quilts and so on. My speciality is, in fact, quilting, patchwork and quilting, and I probably started that when I was about 14 years ago. So as I often joke, that was only seven years ago. In fact, it was rather a lot longer, but I've always enjoyed crafting and patchwork really hooked me and I love it. So now then, what can I tell you? Some, something you may not realise about me is that although lots of you have seen me many, many times on, um, on sewing TV and classes, because I, I teach as well, um, I also do a lot of unpicking. So don't be afraid ever. If you have to unpick things, so do we. It's not a problem. We all have to start somewhere and sometimes you get a bit cocky and think, oh, I can just do that without pinning or without this. And then you think, ah, should have paid attention to my own words. So some sewing tips for you. That's one. Keep a, a seam ripper handy. That will always be your friend. And um, another one that I think is very important, whether you're a, a beginner or more experienced, when you're sewing something, particularly for the first time, a new technique, slow down. There's no rush, it's not a race. Have a little practice with spare fabrics if you've got them before you use your best fabric that you've just purchased so that you get your techniques just right. But also slow down, take your time, watch what you're doing, think about what you're doing and read the instructions. That's always very useful. So what can I say? I've been asked to say what my claim to fame might be and I would have to say in all honesty, being on Sewing Street. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. 
Welcome back. I'm John Cole Morgan and we have got some phenomenal fabrics for you in this last little hour. But first of all, every single week we do Make of the Week. Vicky, myself and Debbie choose who the best people we think are on this the best makes are. So the very first one we've got is Kath Spensley. Then we have Shirley Wines and Suzanne Turner. These are some of the best makes that we thought this week. And it is incredibly hard every week trying to pick who's got the best makes. But these were the ones that we chose this week and we're gonna show you them each individually. First of all, we've got Kath Spensley, who's made this incredible piece here. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and isn't that just stunning? Such detailed work on that. So, so beautiful. Then secondly, we've got Shirley Wines, who's made the sewing machine bundle, sewing machine thing. That, that is just so beautiful. Is that from Debbie Shaw's book? Yeah. It's from her panels. Oh my goodness, they're so good. She didn't actually. <laughs> And then last but certainly not least, we've got Suzanne Turner. That is beautiful. And I have that blue fabric in the back. It is so beautiful. Well done, Suzanne. Well done, Shirley. And well done, Kath. All of you have won free postage and packaging on your next order. So if you could please drop us a line at studio studio at sewingstreet.com one day i will say the email address correctly or if you can drop us a line on sewing street tv and say that you've won make of the week we can get your discount code for your free postage and packaging on your next order every single week please do keep popping your makes up and then vicky myself and debbie go through and find the best make of the makes that we think and trust me it is incredibly hard and they're people who we want to win every week but you've won the last week or the week before so we can't pick you so please keep popping those on the fans page it's great to see what you're all up to but first of all now we've got that point now we're going to go through all these incredible fabrics I'm so overwhelmed where should we start camper vans now we showed you very very briefly in our eight o'clock hour we've got four different sets of camper vans here I'm going to start with this one which is N S Y H 98 and look at these, aren't they just adorable? These are brand new into Sewing Street today. And I love the fact that we've got the vintage car in there as well, as well as the VW camper van in there too. Really, really adorable. Now, unfortunately, we've had a quite a couple of, we've had quite a few demos in this um, four hour show today. So we may not hang around too long with each and every single one of the fabrics, but do check out on the website if you want to get a closer look on any of them. Um, so these are all by the half meter. So they're all gonna be the size I've just shown you. And then we can go through and do each one of these. So the next one we've got is TXYH81. Look how adorable those are. $5.99 by the half meter today. Also brand new to Sewing Street today. Such a lovely little fabric that. Next we have these ones which are also camper vans but a little bit brighter. RYYH71. Look at that. So each of these is a half meter of fabric by 44 inches wide. I love the fact we do imperial one way and metric the other. But that's roughly 19 inches by 44. But if you're wanting to make something for your holiday home or if you've got a camper van or you've got a um, I can't remember what the code, I've completely lost the word that I'm thinking of now. Mobile home, that's what I'm thinking of, that one. Uh, isn't that just such a fun fabric to make a cushion or something really fun to do for it? Or a little notice board or something like that. So the code on this one has vanished. And it, oh no, L-S-Y-H-93. And look at that. These are by the half meter. So if you, say for example, you wanted two meters, you would buy four of these units and they would come to you as a single two meter piece. Just brilliant these. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just going around looking for fabric there and couldn't see it. So the code on this one is C I U L five one. And it's for all the ones that we know we're all supposed to be wanting to go on holiday at the moment and we just can't. There you go. You've got your bucket and your spade, a little bit of a beach ready for you there. Lewis and Irene, small thing sandcastles on sandy yellow. Half metre for $5.99. That's our sandy colourway there. Y-T-U-L-5-7. I'm hearing that lots of you very savvy shoppers have been online and have already purchased loads of this already. This is the Lewis and Irene Small Thing Sandcastles on sky blue fabric, half metre for $5.99. Loving those. So again, we've got a brand new fabric here today. We've got seashells. The code is Q I Y Q U. Blah, blah, excuse me, Q I Y H four three. Sorry, it's been a long morning. <laughs> Q I Y H four three. So this is the new new text available. You'll need to search that on the website, sadly. Q-I-Y-H-4-3. Isn't that fun? Isn't the detailing on these shells just so special? Can you imagine making something there for your bathroom? I have a bag puss chair where my poor husband has to come and sit and talk to me while I'm in the shower. So I could make a little cushion for him there while he has to sit on the chair. But again, if you've got a spare room with maybe a seaside theme or if you just want to do it in your little motor home or your camp van, it's just such a fun thing to be able to make a lovely fabric out of. Such a fun fabric to be able to make such a lovely thing out of. K-S-Y-H-5-6. Now we've had something like this on before and it has been incredibly popular and you can see why. Look at that. So this has been checking out already this morning. Oh, a quarter of the stock of this one is gone already, and you can see why. Isn't that just so fun? This would be great for a quilt backing, actually. So again, the half meter, if you haven't seen, this is what you're getting as a half meter. That's one unit. So if you needed a meter, you'd get two of these, um, and they'd come to you as an individually cut piece of one meter as two units. So that's what we're looking at size-wise for all of the things we're showing at the moment. A half meter looks like that. So we can do something a bit different now. We've got a panel. This is our only panel. Oh, wow. That's so sweet. Look at that. This is brand new today and look how fun that is. So for a panel here, look how big that is. Do you know how big this is? How much? I tell you, someone upstairs is going to get cross. That panel is $5.99. What, what? You're asking me to name Formula One race car drivers. Jensen Button. That one I know, Jensen Button. Lewis Hamilton. Uh, that's about it. Who was the... 
They did that movie, Le Mans. I can't remember who that was with now, but look how incredible this is. It's 0.9 meters, that is huge. So if you are buying these as a multi-buy, they will come cut up already. These are already cut up. So if you did want to do, because I'm just looking at this and thinking, friends of mine, we were discussing doing a one block wonder re, uh, this weekend. And I'm looking at this and thinking, oh, that would be quite interesting to be able to do a one block wonder there. Mm. That you'd need seven panels for. So those would come to you individually cut as seven panels. I love that. Making for grandkids, it's just such a big piece. I'm going to put it to the side as well so you can see just how much fabric you're getting. It's such a huge piece. But I love the way the grass is so beautifully put in. That, that little crosshatch effect to it, it looks so good. Can you imagine the dark green crossroads backing, extra wide backing fabric that we've got? That would tie in beautifully with this quilt. Really, really good that. I'm already looking at it as a quilt because it's a one block wonder. I'm seriously looking at this and thinking, oh, I need seven of these. Because it's nice. It's hard to find really good panels at a good price that are really, really, really good quality as well. This is printed by New Tex and it's called the Grand Prix. I love that. I can't believe this is $5.99. I'm sure there's a mistake there. But of course, now we've done the panel, you've got to do the checkered flag. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, I'm hearing that Formula One is back this week. Do you need the code for this? Look at that. Ooh, makes my eyes go funny. <laughs> It's because we keep looking at the camera and you go a bit weird on that. Right, so which one are we doing next? Victorian ladies. This one is... Oh, good. Got that. I love this. I think this is really fun. Look at that. Oh, more than half the stock of this one has gone already and you can see why. Isn't that just fun? I love that. See, I'm looking at this and thinking, sorry, I'm just popping this down. We've, um, I'm absolutely addicted to stack and wax, absolutely adore them. And I'm looking at this and thinking, oh, that could be quite fun as a stack and wax fabric. Because what you do is you cut out wedges and then you sew those wedges together, doing eight different repeats. And then you sew those, um, you cut them out and do eight different repeats on it. I think that would be really pretty. But again, as a backing, I love backings of quilts, which have got lots of detail on. And this would be really interesting as a backing. It's called Victorian Ladies by New Tex. That's $5.99 by the half meter for that. Really beautiful fabric. Is this new today? Brand new in today. It's lovely. Now these I have been ogling for a little while now. Look how beautiful these flower fabrics are. So this one is R. F Y H nine five. Look at those. Look at the detailing on that. Isn't that just brilliant? Elegant single lilies fabric, half a meter for five ninety nine. This I would most definitely have as a backing of a quilt. Look how beautiful they are. So, in my ear, I have got the voice of Hannah singing all the single lilies, <laughs> doing all the song, and I'm just thinking that is genius. Sorry, love that. Forgive me. Apologies. This is a talkback. We'd make more money on talkback than we would on the fabric. Actually, it could have been Hannah. It could have been Beyonce. We're not quite sure yet. Yep. XFYH85. So these are the elegant lilies. No doubt I'll get a rendition of that in my ear as well, which I love. Look at those. Oh, I'm a bit torn. I'm not sure which one I prefer. Those are gorgeous. Half meter of that, $5.99. How much is left of this one? Is there a lot? Okay, good. Yes, it's about 30 meters left of that. Hopefully there will be six meters left for me when I get back. 
that is beautiful. Maybe lilies are your favourite flower, but... Oh! Or if you're allergic to lilies and you like lilies and you can't have them in your home, what a beautiful way to be able to do it. But look at... Are they? I didn't know that. Apparently lilies are poisonous to cats. I never knew that, but look at the detailing on it. And the detailing on these flowers there, it's absolutely gorgeous, that. 5 99 by the half metre. Next we've got the lovely roses here. This is KYYH65. These are stems by Nutex. Look at that, that's what the half metre looks like when it comes to you. These are bright roses on grey fabric, half a metre for 5 99 Love that. And then last but certainly not least in our collection of flowers here today, AZYH42. We've got poppies. Half meter of that is $5.99. And now that we've got all the flowers in our little collection there, next we have the butterflies on white. I just want to double check that it's, it's okay. Thank you. Now, I absolutely adore butterflies, but just look at that. Is that not, oops, sorry. Isn't this just the most incredible fabric? This is going to be so, so popular. Looking at this and you think, oh my goodness, dressmaking, lining of bags, any form of quilting. Can you just see fussy cutting these out to be able to do EPP projects? The detailing on these butterflies is just incredible. That is so gorgeous. Look at the detailing on that. And they've done them all differently as well, which is so, so thoughtful. Look at the colouring on that. Very, very clever, this. I definitely don't think we're going to have enough of this today. Look how beautiful all these little butterflies are. I'm just looking at that one there. So pretty. Oh, we've only got 19 metres left of this one. Sounds like a lot, but, you know, we do, we do sell quite a bit of fabric. So if this is something you might be interested in, pop it in your basket, make sure you check out. It's only the one day PNP all day, 3.95. You won't pay any more or any less by checking out multiple times during the day. Once you paid your 3.95, that's you done. Hmm? <gasps> and then we got the bumblebee. I absolutely adore this. Have you got the code for that? Makes life easier when it's just bumblebees. Look at those. That is so fun. Love bees and if they've, we need to... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Just thinking, we love the bees and they keep fading away and we've got all this beautiful fabric and it just makes me think of all the little bees. Makes me a bit sad. Right, there we go. I'm gonna ignore that. We're gonna forget that ever happened and we're gonna move on to the hedgehogs and the butterflies. Oh, swirly blue. Oh, psychedelic. Right, K-T-Y-H-16. Look at this. Now, I've not seen anything like this for a long while. Look at that. It's proper psychedelic, that. Look at that. So this is the half meter you're going to get. And just look at that incredible design on there. Absolutely fun and exciting. It's called Tuku Tuku. Oh, that's interesting. In deep sea blue, half meter for the $5.99. Oh, you know when you're looking at one of those insides of a shell of Mother of Pearl, doesn't it look like that? Inside a sort of cl a clam shell or oyster shell. Can you imagine this is your binding? Ooh, I'm gonna do that now. Look at that. Oh, that would be perfect as binding. Look at that. Just these beautiful pops of teal. and Oh my goodness, I love that idea. Binding, that is definitely a binding fabric, that one. Love that. Again, 5 99 by the half meter for that. Is that new to us today? Brand new to us today. 
I'm just building a little collection of fabrics I've shown you. Flamingos on grey. Oh my goodness, look how fun that is. Look at the pineapples. Loving the pineapples. So, so cute. Can you imagine doing cushions for your garden? It's just such a fun fa- Backing for bunting. Oh, if you've got a nice bunting panel, this at the back would be really fun as well. Hmm? Curtains for your she shed. You're just trying to get me to say she shed many times, aren't you? <laughs> Again, that's $5.99 by the half meter there. And don't forget, these are all quilting cottons, 100% cotton, beautiful feel to them as well. So it's all 100% cottons, those. Metallic dragonfly. Ooh. Oh, that's very pretty. Now those golds are metallic. You can just see those metallics there going through. $5.99 there. The Yukata, is that right? Yukata Dragonfly Metallic Fabric. Half meter there for $5.99. This is a beautiful deep navy blue it's on at the back. Really lovely that. And that gold metallic really pops. Dark blue or the white? Cool. These are stunning. C-I-Y-H-86. That is beautiful. <gasps> Ooh. I think new techs have got some fabulous new fabrics out. Look at that. This is the Summer Days da uh, Dandelions on Sky Blue fabric. And the designs in all those beautiful dandelions, isn't it just incredible? You can just see those look as though they've been hand printed. They're beautiful. Thinking of homewares with that as well, that would be really good. Oh, I'm thinking just as a kitchen dishcloth. That would be lovely. Oh, oven mitts. Oven mitts, I like that. But then we go from blue to a bold, bright. Have you got the code? R-D-Y-H-76. From the blue to that. Oh, isn't that just the most beautiful explosion of colour there? Absolutely stunning. Half metre of this, the Summer Days Flower Fabrics. Half metre, $5.99. So I've now been asked to do the green polka dots. Because <laughs> it's the same collection. Um, I think it's that one. You sure? N-O-Y-H-79. Gosh, this is the same collection as that last two. Oh, there we go. Oh, a backpack in that. Wouldn't that be good? Summer Days Circles by Nutex. Oh, green polka dots. Oh, on the fabric it says circles. Oops. Oh, green polka dots fabric. Half a meter there, $5.99. Is that new to us today? Brand new to us today. Now, unfortunately, we are running out of time. So there are loads of other fabrics here. We just haven't got to them because we were doing so much with Jane and with me today. So please check out the website, www.sewingstreet.com. In the middle, you'll have a little YouTube picture, which will be me live going, hello. And then beneath that, you'll be able to get all of the products from today's shows, all four of them. Um, and the ones that we didn't get to will be towards the end of that little selection. So what have we got on tomorrow? We've got doggy treat bags with Al Ma the Alison Marion's, trying to get that out the wrong way around. Got the Lone Star quilt, which I am so excited about. And then we've got the aprons with Alison Marion. And then quilt kits revisited tomorrow. Ooh, that's exciting. And then repeat today of the cross stitch with Jane Greenoff as well. That'll be me tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. And my Lone Star quilt. Oh, you are in for a treat tomorrow. That is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention is block of the week. 
we have done a second one. So watch next Friday, nine o'clock. We'll be doing Block of the Week part two. That one's going to be called Moving On Up. Um, same principle, being able to do as a skill advancing session for you to be able to keep building your skills as you go, doing all the different blocks, etc. in there. So we've been able to keep that going for next week. So thank you all so much for your time today. It's been an absolute joy. Jane was an absolute delight to have. I'm so looking forward to seeing her again. Make sure you check out our website for all the products we've had on today. And please keep your messages coming in. We love hearing from you. And it's been a fabulous morning. Thank you all so much. Catch up with you soon and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.